All right, um, what's going on? Party people. I don't know why I say that so much when I start videos. Oh my it's Evan here. And this is allegedly the most important video, Dark Side Phil, DSP, Phil Burnell. This is apparently, allegedly, the most important video he's ever recorded. And uh he went super fucking emo mode on Twitter earlier today. You can look that up if you care about it. And um yeah, like I say, uh, it's two things I want you to keep in mind. Video is an hour and five minutes long, by the way. But it's two things I want you to keep in mind when you're watching this, or when you're watching this with me or whatever. One, this is apparently his most important video ever, which is a complete lie. I think when he got swatted was a little bit more important, and um, he claims he has some kind of amazing business strategy, at least based on the way he worded it on Twitter. Another thing, I, that's that's both things I want you to keep in mind. Um, description, this is my most important video to date because the subject matter is regarding my future and ability to continue to make YouTube videos full time. I know that this is long, but please give it a watch with all distractions slash drama surrounding it turned off. That's why I've disabled comments and likes slash dislikes. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, title, big news with hardship slash challenge comes change support needed so let's see it's an hour and five minutes long so i'm gonna assume that most of it is worthless and most of it shouldn't even exist in the video like a lot of it is probably going to be him telling us stuff that already happened and stuff he already talked about a lot of times uh i should get a counter up on the screen huh yeah i should let me see if i can get this uh get this to happen within the next two or three minutes before you get bored and find another video to watch. I should get a counter up on the screen. A DSP isms counter. Because why the fuck not? Doop 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 doop. I'm a professional, don't worry. I thought about doing this earlier, as a matter of fact, and I completely forgot until I started with the video. Because I am a dumbass. Use text from file. Bup dup bup dup. Let's see, uh, yeah, I think we might be good to go. I don't know what button is for the counter. It's F1. Beautiful. See how good I see how good I am. I'm a fucking pro. I'm gonna put it under me. Why not? And we need a picture next to this counter. It's gonna be one of my Twitch emotes, or at least one of my FFZ Twitch emotes. If I could find it. This is going to be the DSP ism counter because this motherfucker repeats himself a lot. Can I really not? Uh, I'm doing it wrong because this motherfucker repeats himself a lot. He says a lot of things over and over again. And some of the things we're going to keep count of is um, business, um, attacks, negativity, positivity, negative, positive, um, you know, those those standard things, machinima, business, business is a big one, contract, yeah, those, all of those things DSP loves to fucking say. Hopefully the number doesn't get higher than 99. I doubt it. We shall see. We shall see. Anyway, let's get this show on the road. Show. Let's get this show on the road. One, Dark Side Phil here, and... I've got something pretty serious and important to talk about. Um, I would ask that if you are watching this video to understand that this is probably the most important down. video at this point of my life that I've ever put out in regards to myself and my business and that if you could just, while you watch this video, kind of suspend everything around you, all the nonsense and the drama, and I know that especially when it comes to myself and DSP gaming and all this stuff around my YouTube presence that it always seems to be abound with drama from people trying to bring in stuff just put all that on hold for a moment because Ooh. i've got something really important to talk i gotta about give them a few for FYI, drama and all that on tuesday december like 8, think about this this is something to think about what day as soon as the video start he's talking about drama he's he's predicting drama as soon as the video starts he's predicting drama around the video and he tells us to avoid to basically ignore the world when we watch him. This is like fucking Obama giving a speech. We have to ignore the world when he gives a speech. DSP is really fucking important, obviously, right? 
Ignore this everything else in the world. Ignore everything around the world. This is an, uh, you know, resolved issue or not. <sighs> and how do I mute my? Uh, let me just yeah. tell you, I am at this point pretty stressed. Uh, as you can see, you probably see it in my face. Pretty unnerved a little bit. Um, it's easy to make to yourself that, look stressed, uh, but stress from playing games. A few years ago, when when something similar to this happened, but. The fact that, you know, really, when I, with what I've Contract done, I I've tried to do something very different that not a lot of people have done. I've tried to... Either that or you lost a job. The raw meat. Job. It was when so I it's either contract games, negotiation or machine them kick them out. being uncensored and kind of just giving you me, me, me. And uh, whether that was giving you me, me, a lot me. of stuff about my life and my personal... Uh, stuff going on and whether or not that was too much information at some times which is certainly could be the case it the always that is I don't the edit case my video game playthroughs and i strive to try to be like the unedited guy on youtube even though he strives to be unedited he strives to have zero effort put into his videos quite honestly that formula hasn't really been very popular for quite some time this day and age it's more about a snippet or a highlight or only playing a certain amount of a game and doing com comedy and sketches and stuff around it and highly editing and doing montages and best ofs and countdowns and daily news updates and being a talking head on YouTube. All that is what's YouTube popular right now. Doing these raw video game playthroughs that I became known for and popular. It's funny because they say being a talking head is what's popular on YouTube and, and that's what people want to see. And all of his drama videos is him being a talking head. And those videos get a lot of views. But he talk negative about people that make videos and they're just a talking head and they get a lot of views, even though that's how he get a lot of his views. It's like, it's really fucking well, weird. On YouTube, it's not popular <laughs> anymore. You know, things have changed, things have evolved. Let's the Plays are still popular, DSP. In 2015 is not the same person as the kind of YouTube viewer right way back in 2008 when I got started, which is how I got popular. Okay? And I know that. And I understand that. And Smart. so, with the times come change, and with the times come challenges, and with the times come hardship, all right? As many of you know, this year, 2015, was both, I would say, probably, in a lot of ways, my best year, but in a lot of ways, also my most challenging year. I, had the I thought it was going to say worse. Challenging is not a good way to word it. I think worst is better. On that I had to overcome, whether it was having... And um, apologies ahead of time. I'm sure I'm going to talk over him during some parts of this, but let's be completely fucking honest. His video is an hour and five minutes long. Do you want me to sit here for three hours? Group of people just following me everywhere, stalking my every move, literally looking at all my personal information, hacking my accounts, DDoS attacking my streams. So, basically he's saying the uh, Sons of Kojima are the same people that did everything else negative to him in the last year. Pretty much. He's saying the group of negative, the, the group of negative people that follow him and, and, and watch all of his stuff, they all do all of this. So in DSP logic, I also DDoS attacked him and I um, sent copyright strikes to him. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, I reply to all of his tweets and um, I message his fans, mean stuff all the time. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else do uh, I, I make a bunch of forum posts under a bunch of different accounts all the time? Um, I, I hacked his bank account. I did that too, apparently. Yeah, I did all of that. Swatting me. I uh, swatted attacking them. me with my personal life, my family, my friends, trying to out you don't have friends. information and stuff that has nothing to do with anyone. Just all kinds of nasty shit in regards to that kind of stuff, all right? I'm going to give you but a few for that. Time, There's no point year, in talking about this. In my opinion, was probably one of the most evolutionary years of all the years that I've ever been on YouTube. I really feel that this year, 2015, I evolved. I I had a much I evolved. more mind when it came to the kind of stuff that I would do. It wasn't just about doing the raw gameplay through, but I would expand my horizons. I would try to do more edited content, which actually, in the short term, did work out until it kind of just got lost in the shuffle of the mass amount of uploads that I was doing on DSP Gaming every single day. Uh, I played games that were way outside of my comfort zone that normally I wouldn't have played. And led uh, to really awesome. You got paid like to play it. A whole playthrough of Persona Four, or doing you got paid to play it. You got Rock paid to play it. And all this new kind of stuff. It really did feel this year like it was a rejuvenation and a new vibe 
around the kind of stuff that I was doing, and I felt very positive. What the fuck is all it is? With a lot of the stuff going all on. All hand waving. You hear that with the negative, the fact that <laughs> with all the false copyright strikes and things that were kind of you just talked upon about you and the tricks that people found around YouTube's copyright system really concretely hurt me this summer. He just talked about negative YouTube stuff. He goes into positive and then goes back to negative. It literally has cost me thousands of dollars and really concretely hurt me in a way that no one has ever been able to do before. You know, before this year, it was always about trolling. It was about trying to smear my personal reputation. And the bottom line is 90% trying of to he smears me his own reputation. Don't care about that shit. All they want to know is, is Phil putting out a new video game? Is it entertaining? I love how he admits right here that his fans don't give a fuck about all of that extra shit. And to be honest, they really don't. At least most of them don't. And fair enough, you know, fair enough they don't care about all of the extra shit that surrounds DSP, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't understand how you can really like somebody if you understand time. that he's that's pretty it. much a well, shitty care person. About the air of drama that's around all the bullshit, right? But this year, these people found a way to actually hurt me and my business concrete. And the thing is, he say his fans, most of them don't care about the drama and all of that stuff. But then he make videos about drama. And he talks about drama on Twitter all the time. He talks about drama in pre-streams all the time. And he talks about drama in vlogs all the time. And if he's not talking about drama, he's saying something that could bring drama. So and it's maybe his fans do happened. care about it. So maybe they just don't talk about it. Despite all the negatives and all the positives, I still think this year has been a very eventful year and a, a very progressive year in regards to myself and my business. An insurance failure. Unfortunately, today I got some really bad news, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it or anything. Um, got I'm dropped tell you as contract, much as I got can, but not to do concrete details on stuff because I really do feel at this point in my career on YouTube that I've given too much information and by giving too much information unfortunately people have found ways to use it against me no to twist shit. the truth into a half truth that makes everything nasty or finding a way to get at me and I'm not turn a truth into a half truth to make everything seem nasty think about how dumb that fucking sound people turn the truth into the half truth to make it seem negative gonna do that this time i'm just gonna basically tell you generally what's going he said on with business me. once by the way and then i'm gonna so tell you what my approach is i'm gonna tell you what i'm doing to react to it uh to to try to continue doing what i'm doing for a living full time and i'm gonna be honest it's not certain i mean let's face it youtube was never fully certain right it was never a hundred percent phil will always be doing youtube full-time thing but phil i thought fact, you said a business right now i thought you said working working stuff and an office wasn't the full, uh, wasn't for certain, was, wasn't for sure. People have asked me that over the years, and I never really was able to not narrow it certain down. For sure. And as of today, I kind of retrospectively looked at everything, and I said, here's really what the plan was. Number one, when I started on YouTube in 2008, it was just as a hobby to mess around, and I no didn't know shit. if it was going to be anything popular or whatever. But when if I you start on YouTube to make money, you're not going to turn out too I good. I kind of, in the back of my mind, always had this set plan. The first step was to pay off all of my debts from my previous life. You know, before YouTube... I had a life where I had racked up tons of credit card debt and lots of financial issues. My credit score was in the toilet. And my goal was to be successful enough at YouTube to get rid of that. And I was. I wiped all that clean. My debt was a clean slate. My credit score skyrocketed. And I got myself to a good place financially back when I lived in Connecticut. The second step was to move out of Connecticut to a place, a, a state, a location where, number one, I could get a house that I could afford and was really a nice place to live, but not too outside of my means. you telling me you means. afforded that house? And number two, where the taxes and tax laws and okay. things were going to be um, more favorable oh my for God. someone who runs their own business, okay? Connecticut was terrible. Connecticut had incredibly high you know income what? taxes. No, I'm sorry, DSP. Tax, stigma I'm sorry. associated with me that's all this drama that has nothing to do with the videos that i put out but instead around all this fucking really teen bullshit of you know teen bullshit. he said she said tmz kind of style internet bullshit that has nothing to do with anything and how does it have nothing to do with anything way, that makes no fucking you know, sense on youtube and, and concretely affect my business and cost me a lot of money since the summer 
So Business I'm kind of stuck on hold. I want to get past this point in my YouTube It has career, nothing to do with anything. YouTube is the focus except and eventually transition you. out and say, well, I've got another focus, but YouTube is still important to me. That's kind of where I want to get. So a lot of people have always said, well, Phil doesn't have a backup plan and all that. There is no backup plan because ultimately the bottom line is I make more money on YouTube than I would going out and getting a nine to five job. I make. But guess what? At a nine to five job, somebody can't email somebody and then fuck you over at your job. If you're working at a nine to five job, I can't email your boss and, and just completely lie and you get fired the same day. But on YouTube, with that being your job, somebody could just send a bunch of copyright strikes and now you're out of business for a couple of days. Whatever. I still make more money. Even today, I still make more money, even with all the mm -hmm. decline in views that I've had money uh, on views. YouTube than I did when I had that nine to five office job in Connecticut. And ultimately, wow, do I love what I do a hell of a lot more. And I think that it reaches a lot more people. You love what you do, even though you complain every day. Than what I used to do. So I wouldn't go back. And no, I wouldn't go get a nine to five job because basically that would screw everything over. Everything that I've done on YouTube would have been for naught, right? It so let me get this straight. With his logic, if I write an amazing book, right, I make like some fucking Lord of the Rings shit. Everybody fucking love it. I make a ton of money. And then I don't write any more books after that. Then I mean my book, no matter how good it was, was for nothing because I didn't make new books. That's basically his logic. If he leaves YouTube and gets a regular job, everything he did on YouTube would be for nothing because he doesn't still do it. So he's going to do, he should do YouTube until he dies, basically. Because if he stops doing YouTube at any time, it's going to be for nothing. Well, I know how it's that like logic is. I, started, I know how that works and now. And ultimately, at this point, being out of the job market for five plus years, I'm basically seen as unhirable. I'd have to completely start over, try to re-educate in some kind of another field. Because no one's going to hire me for what I was doing five years ago, and I haven't done it since then. You know That's what I mean? bullshit. It's, just, it's not viable. And a lot of people always say, well, he wouldn't have to start Washington over State in a different Microsoft field. There, he would just have to have and, a lower uh, position in his current you know, one. Get the fuck the out of here. There's like two or three big tech things out here. Why don't you do those? They don't, they're not looking for me. I'm a YouTube gamer and a vlogger. They're not looking for me. They're looking for someone with a tech background who can program and who can do that kind of shit. No but one's looking for a YouTuber it. to work for a mainstream company. You know what I mean? And that's why people want to make shit up and say, oh, it's so easy. Phil could just drop everything and just get a job doesn't happen and in fact it's not going to happen there's no way it's going to happen it's an unrealistic expectation it's something that in this economy is not going to happen in this economy he complains about the economy in 2015 he complained about the economy in 2009 but it's an unrealistic expectation to expect him to not do youtube as a, as a job and to work somewhere else it's an unrealistic expectation that is phenomenal you know, that is um, fucking there's phenomenal. There's people out there who've been in the job market for the past five years. I couldn't just yet again with DSP's logic. No one in the country can get a job unless they've had the job before, because he's about to say now other people have had the same job at the same position and they're more experienced. So basically, with his logic, no one anywhere can get a job because there's always going to be someone else with more experience than you. That's kind of how it is. It's Kind of how life is. But, Drop you know. YouTube and get a job. It's just not going to happen. It's not. So the bottom line is, even with all the hardships I've come up against, with all the problems, with all the stuff going on, I have to stay the course and I have to try to make best of what I have and what I've built here on YouTube for the past seven years. Do you want to do YouTube until you're 50? Eventually, you won't be able to do it now, anymore, DSP. Eventually. I don't think going to argue that you've seen a decline of my business, in particular DSP, in the past couple of years. However... I will say this, this year in 2015, that decline plateaued and I was pleased because finally after maybe two or three solid years of what I saw was a decline in viewership to this year, it stabilized. And I said, wow, finally on a month to month basis, I can now estimate what I'm going to make. I know exactly what. I'm Remember, he bought a house while his views were in the decline because he talked about getting, getting the house and he, he moved out of, uh, he moved into Washington, what, last year? So yeah, he, he, he got a new house and then moved a bitch in with him while his views were declining, even though his job is and his pay is based on views. How stupid is I'm this I'm going to bring in 
and I now know, you know, okay, I can budget out for things like bills and projects and what can I pay towards this debt every month. And it really helped about me that green when screen I saw that, I was use. like, wow, now I know. Maybe this is the plateau. I'm never going to go crazy dip down again. It'll stay where it is. And things were going swimmingly this year until no, they the summer when, unfortunately, this big negative thing happened with those false copyright strikes. And copyright yeah, strikes. even though it had nothing to do with myself That's a DSP or my at this video point. content that I was putting out or the viewers had nothing to do with any of us because of that abuse and that trolling. The copyright strike had nothing to do with you. So what the fuck did I have to do with it? Stupid kids, stupid uh, kids, and, and abusing YouTube system, which is very. What's the point of talking about them negatively like this? Just say it was shitty, and it was a shitty situation. Opinion. You don't have way, to keep talking about the person that did it. The rights of the copyright holders, rather than it just would make somebody want to do it again. Whether or not there was actually a copyright abuse implemented, um, my business lost thousands and thousands of dollars. Business. And I wasn't expecting that. Okay. And thousands of dollars. I do want to say thousands thank you to of those dollars is a DSP as well at this point. Over the past several months, trying to basically get the word out about my stuff, supporting me on social media, Patreon. combating this just really disgusting group of people who follow me around just to make my life a living hell and saying it's not about all your stupid. Shout out to the people that combated the negativity on the internet. So shout out to the people that play meat shields for me and get in arguments on Twitter with other people that don't like me. That's what you should say, because that's what you're saying. That that's that's what he's saying if you read between the lines. A fucking amazing. Bullshit. It's about what Phil puts out on a daily you basis. Shouldn't, no, 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 no. You shouldn't praise anyone for defending you under any situation. I've seen people defend me before on Twitter and shit. And I tell people, no, don't don't fucking defend me. If I want to defend myself, I will. If I don't I won't, and they can just talk. They can just talk to themselves. But if I was in DSP position, I wouldn't. I, if I was in DSP position, legit, I would go on Twitter and say, if these people message you with nonsense or message you with stuff you don't want to see or whatever, don't reply to them. Don't block them. Don't mute them. No, block, mute them. Mute them if you want. Fuck it. Mute them. Don't reply to them. Don't argue with them. Don't do none of that shit. Because when you got people arguing for you on the internet, it makes you look worse. This is why people in 2008 and 2009 and shit hated Justin Bieber. Because you would say, oh, Justin Bieber's music sucks. And fucking 15, 12 year olds would message you on Twitter, spamming you, cursing you out and saying you should die and shit. But that's, that's just the way I feel about it. He shouldn't praise people for defending him if it's on his forums, website, uh, Twitter, chat room any of that shit he, you shouldn't pray that's that. what we're here for we don't want to hear about the other bullshit all right because when people and defend you like that it makes people not like you more me on patreon this well, big whatever. thing that was a big gamble I'm, i didn't I'm know it on making patreon Let me shut up. and doing patreon goals and stuff like that was going to pan patreon out again. luckily it did CPS every together. single month this year i've hit my goal on patreon which is amazing the fact that people have come out to support me both not only to watch my stuff but those who could to financially pledge to my cause and say phil yes we understand that there's been a decline but we really want you to continue doing what you're doing but i thought it plateaued i didn't know if it was going to work you out you should have opened a patreon two years ago then, right awesome okay because it declined two years ago i thought it plateaued it's not year. a crutch it's not oh well i could just keep doing exactly what i'm doing and not change anything up because now i'm making more money because i have patreon it's not the case at all in fact right now when i've been using patreon i haven't been making more money basically i'm kind of making about the same amount that i made before this big decline in um if you have time in your schedule go and watch dsp's original patreon announcement video and he was talking about he, he he said the classic line i don't want to be missed of views but one of the things he mentioned was he was pretty much trying to get the point across that with patreon he could wake up in the morning and a new game could be out and he could say i don't want to play that game i want to play this retro game or i want to play this game that no one is going to watch and i won't have to worry about it that's what Patreon was for when he first started it. It was for him to, to not do the same bullshit over and over. It was for him to have a slightly unique uh, YouTube channel and f to be different than the same bullshit he did for the last six, seven years. But then he didn't get as much money on Patreon as he expected, I assume. And uh, now Patreon is making his business balance out when patreon was supposed to make his business different but 
whatever. You you get the, you get the fuck I mean. Views that I saw the past couple <laughs> of years, and I said, well, great. Views. I'm adopting new stuff because of Patreon, like this new microphone and the soundproofing foam behind me, and all these improvements to my business and these. All these improvements. Let me tell you what he got with Patreon. He got a green screen, even though he already had a green screen. So I don't even know if he really got that, but he allegedly got a green screen. He got the mic, he got the shock, uh, shock protector, and he got that little bit of soundproofing right there that you see on the screen. He's had Patreon for about 10 months, 11 months, 10 or 11 months. He's had Patreon about 10 or 11 months. And all he got was soundproofing and a microphone and a green screen for his business um stuff that wasn't for his business is um a little refrigerator mini fridge for his office put that in quotes mini fridge for his office and a bunch of other stuff that didn't help his business but all this stuff for the business when in reality he only got three things and one of them which is the green screen he doesn't even fucking use anymore had a patreon for 11 months thousands of dollars every month and he only got a $200 mic set up about $300 worth of soundproofing and like a freaking Chinese store version of a green screen set up now in 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 the real world if you give somebody a thousand dollars and tell them oh, hey make your YouTube channel better with this thousand dollars they're probably gonna get a mic soundproofing green screen might even get like a secondary computer to stream on or something. No, DSP needed a whole month of Patreon to get the mic, a whole month to get the soundproof, and then a whole month to get the green screen. That's just three months though. All other months, I don't know. But he, remember, he got all these things to, to support the business. He can't even name more than two. He didn't even name the green screen, did he? Marathon streams I'm now doing about once a month and the new playthroughs that I've done that were outside of my comfort zone. New playthroughs that were outside of his comfort zone. DSP doesn't have a comfort zone. DSP been playing weird shit since forever. If you look at his old Dark Side Field playthroughs and his original DSP gaming playthroughs, he never really had a comfort zone. To be completely honest, his comfort zone is high views or low views. That's pretty much it. But he never had a comfort zone as far as games. At least, well, no. He never had a comfort zone as far as games after his first year or two years of doing YouTube, pretty much. But um, yeah, marathons apparently improved the business and um, playing games outside of his comfort zone improved the business. Things that got low views and things that cost him no money. Give me a thousand dollars so I can buy a ten dollar game and play it for seven hours and don't finish it. Um, improve the I'm business. I'm trying to use Patreon as a capability to improve myself. Okay? You didn't improve anything. But you got a mic that doesn't change anything, and you got soundproofing that doesn't change anything. Not, and you got a green screen you don't use. It's not something that's going to let this business all business right, in the long term, and I understand that now. All right, and we're going to talk about that. So now let's get to the subject at hand. Now that I've done all this pre preface stuff, it took him um, almost twenty minutes to get the to the subject. The bottom line is this: I'm going to say it very quickly in a nutshell, so that everyone can understand. Very quickly in a nutshell, and we have almost an hour of video without left. giving too much information. All right. Machinima is renegotiating my contract um, when it comes to YouTube and my partnership with them on YouTube for DSP Gaming. You may not remember, but a long time ago, not a long time ago, but before he moved across the country, he said he contacted Machinima and um, asked Machinima if they were going to come re renegotiate his contract soon. And Machinima told him no. Machinima told him, oh, no, you, you're doing just fine, DSP. Well, you can move across the country if you want. We won't, we won't renegotiate your contract. You're going to get paid the same thing. Fast forward a year, and Machinima has uh, fucked them. It's not affecting the King of Hate vlogs, but the contract that I have with them for the King of Hate vlogs isn't a very lucrative contract anyway. It's pretty much a standard YouTube contract from a few years back. And I basically, I don't make almost any money on the King of Hate vlogs. I just want to make that abundantly clear. I make on the King of Hate vlogs in a year probably 5%. If that's wow. what I make on DSP gaming, that's the amount of discrepancy <laughs> there is between my vlog. That's why he put these videos on his gaming, gaming channel. He don't put them on his gaming channel to get more attention. He put them on his gaming channel because he get way more money for uh, the views than on his regular uh, his vlog channel. His vlog channel, I guess, ad block hurts his vlog channel. Maybe I don't fucking know, but yeah. So that's why. 
the King of Hate vlogs always is kind of a second thought, even though I have ongoing series like DSP Tries It and The Week in Preview and my podcast and Ask the King. And even though I do vlogging when I go on trips and stuff over there, that's never going to be the focus because that's not what's bringing in the money to pay the bills. That's kind of a side fun thing that I do when I get a chance to do it, but it's not going to be a main focus because it certainly isn't anything, right, that's going to go crazy or pay the bills. And the bottom line is this year a lot of people said, Phil, why didn't you do new series? Like you said, you were going to possibly do a movie series and you were going to do this and that. Two reasons. Number one, because my money. focus really was set on Patreon. I wanted to make sure that people who were so money. to my Patreon were happy, right? And I've done as much as I can. That's not a good reason, DSP. I didn't do this unique new thing for my channel because I wanted to make sure people was happy on Patreon. That's like saying I didn't paint my car because I wanted to make sure the neighbors were happy with my mailbox alignment. It makes no fucking sense. Just like the mailbox thing, it makes no fucking sense. And with flaws, and I'll admit, you know, there were things in this year that I couldn't come through uh, with, like trying Project to Seven. Project Seven, which just wasn't the right for the time, even though I thought I was. It wasn't right for the time. All right. I hyped and, it up for know, half a year. I know there's still wasn't people right for who the were time. upset that Project Seven never happened, and I understand KG. that. And you know, moving forward, I have to be more careful with things that I try to plan or promise out, right? To people because if I can't do it and I can't realistically make an expectation, I shouldn't be telling people that I'm going to do it, right? No shit. <clears throat> but we live and we learn. And so we live and we that learn. was kind of the main focus. And number two, as I just okay. said, the vlogging isn't the focus. I almost make no real revenue on the vlogging. So I'm going to take significant time out from the gaming activities, which are bringing in the money and paying the bills to do vlogging. Money, and vlogging bills. Is kind of just a side thing. All right. So, I'm just making up new DSPisms at this point. All of this stuff is about money. Renegotiating certain contracts. My contract is one of the ones under scrutiny, and basically, I have 10 days to comply with this new contract that they have wow. now offered me. Now, I'm going to be honest with everyone. It's not an unfair contract. In fact, it's a very fair contract. In fact, even though I'm not going to disclose to you what the contract is, it is the most kind of probably the best offer I'm going to get without like really hashing stuff out with another company meaning i'm going to stay a managed partner it's not going to change i'm still going to have all the protections that i have under machinima's umbrella i'm <laughs> machinima still going to throwing a bunch of condoms over his body i'm still going to have help all with all the things related to dsp gaming and all the, the help that i've gotten from machinima you know machinima in the past few months has provided me with a ton of free games if anything i have to say this machinima really in the year of 2015 stepped up for the first time since, honestly, I've done business with them, they stepped up business. as a partnership company, and I think they finally realized there's enough competition out there that people can go anywhere they want. And they stepped I have up a lot as a partnership already. company I because they gave Dark Side Field some free okay, games. I hinted that this was happening. I already got three offers. I'm not even lying. I have three offers via email. There's random people sending me emails. Oh, I heard you might be negotiating, so here's some, you know, here's our offer. And of there course, was none probably. of the offers that I've gotten are as good as what Machinima was offering me to re I can guarantee you it's shitty fucking companies. It's a lot of, a lot of shitty companies uh, that try to um, partner people through YouTube. And I'm sure most of them, and most of those hit them up. You know, the bottom line is this. Machinima's done, done a really good job this year in particular. Maybe not so much in previous years besides the fact that they got me into E3 in 2012. Outside of that, they were kind of just like the silent partner. You know, we'll make sure that you get paid for your videos, but we don't really get involved too much in anything else. This they year, used to they get really involved. stepped up and they helped me out in a big way, many different ways. Some yeah, ways I well, haven't you. even revealed to anyone because it's none of anyone's business and there's legal ramifications and things kind of tied into it. So there's none of your business, kind of and legal ramifications here, and made it abundantly clear that they I'm not going to say anything. My partnership with them. They want it to continue. And this new offer. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Me, even though it's certainly. If you know about it, you know about it. If you don't, you don't. As what I've had with them all these years is still incredibly not only fair, but I, it's almost it seems to me like, listen, we you know we can't keep offering you what you've had, but here's something that's really kind of good. All right. And we know that there's going to be a big pay drop, which is the truth of the matter here is that. For me to renegotiate here and do this contract with Machinima, I'm going to take a pay cut. And this is probably the worst possible time for it because, as I said, I just lost all that money since the summer because of mm -hmm. the trolling and the false copyright strikes. And I'm just, I'm at a moment here where I'm trying to rebuild everything. I'm trying to rebuild DSP Gaming from the ground up and say, well, you know, no one is seeing my chat, my channel in the related videos. No one is seeing my channel. In YouTube search but let's think about this he trying to rebuild his channel up as far as YouTube searches and shit is concerned that has nothing to do with how much you get paid though how much you get paid shouldn't affect 
how many videos you can put out. Well, I guess I guess you can say it can if you uh, if you quit doing YouTube full time. But I don't I don't know the way he wording it, making it seem like it's something else when it's not. I don't, I don't or anything know. like that. Let me see if I can just plug away and do popular games like Fallout 4 that everyone wants to see. Everyone and if I wants can get to back see. in there. And I think in November, I did a good job of that. I think for the most part, if you saw the performance <sighs> of the videos that I put out in November, whether it was Fallout 4 or the Rockathon or various other projects, that they did really well and that I'm on track to getting DSP Gaming back to where it needs to be. Business? But unfortunately, now oh, this is happening, business. and I don't think there's anywhere in the blame. There's no fingers to point. That's the thing. I remember when I, when I had a contract renegotiation back in 2012, okay? I was livid, and I was fucking pissed off that it was happening, and I was blindsided. And now it's kind of like, am I still blindsided? Yes, but it's happened to me once before, you know? And quite honestly, uh, you know, I kind of felt that this was coming any time. I actually was surprised because last year when I was moving across the oh, country, I it. kind of preemptively poked Machinima and I was like, hey guys, uh, I'm going to be moving. So FYI, if you're going to have any bad news to tell me, I hope you'll tell me now so that I don't move and immediately after I get there in June at least of they didn't lie to you them. tell me that you're changing my contract. And basically at that point they were like, no, don't worry about it. We're not, you know, we're not auditing contracts or whatever at this time and it's not a big deal. Now it's happening a year and a half later. Okay. So here's the deal, everyone. Take a sip. Here's the deal, sip. First of all, as of right now, for the next 10 days, I'm considered a free agent. <laughs> I, mean, I am still signed with Machinima. All right. You're not a free but agent then. Do you know what that means? The income that I'm making with them is all subject to whether You're or like not a restricted I free with them agent. in the next 10 days. If I re-sign with them in the next 10 days, then it's business as usual. I'm still signed with Machinima. Business. Everything goes on as it has before. However, I'm going to be making less money. All right. I'm not going to go into specifics because then people are going to go into specifics is a wave my head like I'm Stevie fucking wonder. Right. No, no, no one. The bottom line is no one knows how much I ever made beforehand and no one knows how much I'll be making in the future. It's all. Like I said, if you know, you know, if you don't, you don't. No one knows how much you made beforehand and no one will know. Bullshit. And people can speculate with their drama and trying to get into people's fucking business. It's bullshit. And again, like he's said, please, talking about this. Okay, again. Ignore all the drama while you're watching Rambo this video. Rambo told, told us how much you made, I'm though. I'm trying to make a point here, all right? I've got a concrete plan moving forward to make this work. <clears throat> concrete plan. If I choose not to sign with this. Machinima concrete in the next plan. 10 days, then I will be basically by contract with them for DSP Gaming only. Not the King of Hate Vlogs, but just DSP Gaming. That contract will be terminated. And basically, I'll have no ads on my videos, and I'll have to find a way to monetize my videos in another way. Now, obviously, I don't want that to happen because if of I course that not. Why would I want to make videos for that free? Fuck I'm that. A fucking influx of content, ID match bullshit that I'll never be Fuck able to re that. remove from my videos, just like I had in late 2012 when all that shit happened and all the fucking. I'm sorry, was it late 2012 or 2013? Late 2013, when YouTube flipped the switch and all the content ID shit went out, and then I became a managed partner with Machinima, and it all went away. All right. In particular, I'll never be it able to play the game again. I'll never be able to oh, play daddy, the game with music on again. Any of that shit will, it will all negatively affect me. So obviously, I don't want that to happen. I have to make a pretty important decision within the next 10 days or so. So immediately, now that I've just made this public information, I guarantee you, I'm going to start getting offers. Drama. Because this happens oh, okay. every time. I'm going to get offers from all these different partnership companies. Shitty and companies. And they're going to start flooding in. And I'm going to have to look at what everyone has to offer me. And I'm going to have to determine whether or not what I have as an offer with Machinima is good enough for me to continue to be with them or if I go with another company. And I'll be honest, because Machinima really did honest. step up in 2015, I'm leaning towards staying with them, all right? I see no reason to sever a partnership that's been so long-standing. The fact that I really don't have much negative to say about Machinima, besides the fact that every once in a while it's a little bit hard to get a hold of them. In particular, recently, they've kind of been better about that. And they really have helped me in regards to issues with DSP Gaming and stuff and getting me free copies of games and stuff this year. So really, hmm. I can't really complain. I say, wow, it's actually been working out better this year, and I like the relationship I'm having with them. It would, make, it would not make as much sense now to leave them Right, and to kind of start over with Is another Machinima company. Your girlfriend? But at the same time, I'm certainly going to leave my options open, and I'm not going to say to anyone, "No, I don't want to see what you have to offer." If Machinima is his girlfriend. Partnership company out there has a lucrative offer or something that they want to offer me. I'd be more than willing. To no shit, open you would be more than willing if you got it. more money. Is, I've only duh. got ten days from now. Ten so, days. Come December wow. 18th, if I'm not signed again with Machinima or with someone else. 
these next 10 days are going to be stressful as fuck for him. Holy crap. So the bottom line is this, everyone. I have to rethink what I'm doing on YouTube. When you look at the history of how I've done on YouTube, the fact that from the years 2012 to 2015, there's been a decline in my business. This year, it finally plateaued, and I was doing good. And then because of false copyright issues, I tanked again. Now I'm on the up again, and now this is happening. It's kind of like every time I get right back on the horse and I'm fighting against this. It's something I was thinking about earlier. And... I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna word it a different way so people don't uh, fucking turn it into me trying to make some kind of other argument. But the universe is trying to send DSP a message. Almost, it really seems that way. It seems like the universe is trying to send him a message. Like the universe is trying to say, DSP, you know this YouTube shit. You've been doing it for a long time. It's old now. It's gotten old. You should have moved on already. Maybe now would be a good time to move on. You know, maybe a month ago, maybe a year ago would have been a good time to move on. But maybe now is a good time to move on. You get the copyright strikes, you, you lost, what, I think you lost like what, almost 3 million views? His YouTube channel gets destroyed in a YouTube search. He pretty much is forced to open a Patreon account um, before the copyright strikes, but he pretty much was forced to open a Patreon account just to freaking stay even, to stay leveled with how good he was doing a few years back. Then you have the copyright strikes. Then you have more copyright strikes. And you, you got all this uh, trolling that happens to you every day. Whether you call uh, criticism trolling or not, it's a really thin line to be completely honest. But you got all of this that happens to you every day. You got a dwindling fan base. You know, you got people that scared to even say they watch your videos on the internet because they know other people are going to give them shit for it. And then now you have the contract renegotiation coming up, which is going to flat out give you less money than what you're making unless you turn into a viral sensation and start getting a million views a video, which isn't going to happen. You got all of this stuff happening, all of this stuff negative happening with uh, your business. And you don't just think to yourself, wow, maybe it's a good time for me to move on. Maybe I should move on before the sink ships. Maybe I should hop out and hop out and get in the lifeboat before this before the, the ship sinks completely. No, no, no. DSP is just gonna stay on that ship until it's done sinking. Because he's fucking stupid, apparently. And every opportunity brings another opportunity. You know, all of this bad stuff happening to him. If he would have left YouTube a year ago, he could have found some better shit that's way better than YouTube. He could have been getting paid more. He wouldn't have to worry about people sending him shit on Twitter. He wouldn't have to worry about managing a website and all of that. No, he kept doing YouTube. He lost 3 million views because of copyright strikes. He could have moved on. He might have been doing better now, but no, he kept doing YouTube. Now Machinima wants to renegotiate his contract. We have another situation where DSP can move on from YouTube. We can do other stuff. But no. He's going to continue to do YouTube. And continue to rant on pre-stream. And continue to get in petty arguments with people on, uh, on Twitter. And then block them after that. And continue to ban people over and over and over. And ban the same people every day on the different accounts on his forums. And be stressed out about views. And be stressed out about what game coming out. And be stressed out if he can't beat a game before a certain amount of time. And all of that. He would rather do all of that than just take a chance and move on. Just like he took a chance to do YouTube in the first place. He can take a chance and move on in his life. And just not do YouTube. Or just do YouTube part time. And of course if you say that to him. Well I can't do YouTube part time because it'll ruin everything I've been doing for the last seven years. And... But hopefully you get what I mean. It's like the world is trying to show him, dude, move on from this shit. And he just doesn't want to. Of shit. And people that don't want me to succeed, I say, fuck you. I'm going to keep succeeding because every person that says that I, I'm not good enough and I can't keep, I can't keep, you know, doing well, that motivates me to do better. And then I do better. And then I get knocked down another fucking peg. And I'm going to be honest, it's getting fucking frustrating at this point because it's like thing after thing after thing after thing after thing, whether it's a personal thing that really has nothing to do with my business, but it still negatively shines upon me, whether it is a concrete business related thing with money. I'm just tired of it. I just want to fucking sit here money. every day. 
and make fun and entertaining video content for you. And that's all I should have to fucking worry about. Not all this other outside bullshit that's kind of bearing down on me at this point. And I'll be honest, this, this is the holiday season. This is Christmas time. It's supposed to be a festive time. And I'm doing my fucking best. I really am. But it's hard to focus on that shit when you got all this negative stuff going on in the back of your mind. And really, I'm trying to hold stuff together. I really am. You know, I sit here and I might seem composed to you. But, if only you, you know, had support I'm kind of teetering a little way. bit on the edge where it's like I am fucking kind of worried and pissed off about all this stuff that's going on. And it's not like three years ago where I'm going to run around and say the fucking house is burning down or anything like that. <clears throat> I seriously think that even if I do re-sign with Machinima and I'm making way less money than I was, that I'm still going to find a way to make it happen. Things might be tight. I might not be able to go out to dinner all the time anymore, and I certainly won't be able to buy these wonderful toys all the time. You know what? I mean, but I think I can still make ends meet and I'm still going to be able to make the business work and still make more money than if I quit everything on YouTube and ran out and tried to find a nine to five job somewhere. We so, really circled the back to the nine to five forward, thing again. Here's my three pronged plan, much like the trident of Aquaman. I have or <laughs> the trident of Poseidon and now people will Photoshop a trident of Poseidon in my hand to show the three prongs. Much like but that, Aquaman was there an be a three-pronged plan for moving forward and how I feel that I can basically make things turn around oh my with God, myself, my online, you know, YouTube presence. And then what I'm going to do is tell you what you can do to help, all right? Because that's the number one question I'm going to get. Watch the videos, spread the word, tell your friends, Patreon, um, get in arguments with people that don't like him on the internet and uh, make yourself look bad. So those people could not like you and then not like him more because you got in an argument and, and made them annoyed. Uh, what else can you do to help DSP? Um, hmm. Okay, buy some soap from uh, from Pandalee. Uh, I think that might be it. I think that might be it. I got, I got all of those covered. By the way, um, make sure not go to fucking eBay. Make sure to go to Etsy.com forward slash no etsy yeah etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash the black current and buy you some motherfucking soap son we got spiced holiday fruit glycerin glycerin soap shit is fucking insane blows your fucking mind strawberry rhubarb glycerin soap amazing um hot cocoa glycerin soap phenomenal and we also have vanilla bean glycerin soap only five dollars the most expensive soaps are $6, but I guarantee you it will be worth every fucking penny. So make sure to go to etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash the black current and buy some soap from this girl named Leanna that goes by Panda Lee on the internet. And she stays in Seattle, Washington. She doesn't stay in Seattle, Washington, but that's what she says she's from. She's a complete hipster. But um, buy soap from her and maybe she can... I don't know, get like a, a hamster car and fucking run away from DSP. The end of this video is, well, it's great, Phil, but what the hell can we do to help? All right. Here's my plan moving forward. All right. Number one, I need to diversify myself. And I know that I said this years ago that I wanted to do it. And I tried to you do it. You said this months ago, like too, and you never did it. Of vlog series and, you know, the whole thing with Project 7 that I worked on years and years ago was a way to try to diversify my. That I worked on. You mean that other people worked on and you just was bought of? Content, so I didn't pigeonhole myself into a corner where I was just doing <sighs> gameplay, 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 gameplay. And you saw what happened with that. It all kind of blew up in my face. and It blew up in his face. For whatever reason, you know, people were For whatever reason. Shit. It's like, whatever. I never even knew that that stuff was going on behind the scenes. I never knew that that stuff was going on behind the scenes. He's referencing the fucking Brambo and Howard uh, exposure video. Oh, my God, and DSP. Ultimately, it kind of came back to bite me. He has to say it and duck his head all down. He can't even lie to us correctly. That I have to have all these formal contracts and agreements hashed out ahead of time so there's no misunderstandings and misconceptions. And a formal contract a contract you, you you saying next time you do something with somebody like project seven you got to have a contract with them but you didn't pay those people so you're going to have a contract to not pay somebody and to get all the money people don't come back three years later to complain about stuff when I, they never even said a word to me i mean it is what it is let's but sign a contract i'm not going to pay you sign the contract the and I'm going to take all the money and lease a BMW, I sign a contract. I wanted to do more montage style stuff. I wanted to do the best of each month montage. I wanted to do the best and worst of each gameplay 
uh, major gameplay series that I did. I'm still and waiting I, on the I best and worst of Minecraft and the best and worst of Bloodborne. Still March, waiting. April, and I've been waiting for I, months I kind of downplayed it a little bit and only did it maybe once a month for the ongoing months until the summer. And here's what I saw. At first, there was a lot of interest. And then the interest waned and waned and waned and went to almost nothing to the point where I was putting in five, six hours to edit these videos and they were barely getting any attention. And I, when I asked everyone what happened, the overwhelming response I got was, well, the problem is you're still playing as many games as you were before. So you're making these videos. That's great. And at first we were interested, but now they just get lost in the shuffle of all the other gameplay you're doing. And we don't have a chance to watch them anymore. We don't even realize when they're out and therefore they don't get the attention that they deserve. So I took that into consideration, and I was like, okay, and I kind of said, all right, I'm going to take put that on the back burner for now. I'm going to listen to what people... Think about it. When is the last time DSP did a montage? Alan Wake. He did one Alan Wake montage. People paid for him to do Alan Wake montages, by the way. He did one. It got low views. He bitched about it having low views. Never did it again. It was the last montage he did. It was almost two months ago. He wants me to trust him to make good montages when he last time he made one was almost two months ago and he never got better at editing that's the funny thing about editing if you edit stuff and and i know because i edit stuff if you edit stuff and you get in a certain little point a certain little way of editing stuff and you don't ever edit stuff just to fool around you know you just edit stuff to put out you're never going to get better at least that's the way i see it and dsp probably is the same way as i am when it comes to editing you edit stuff to put out, but you don't edit stuff to put out and actually make it better. So every time you edit a video, it's edited just as good or just as bad as the last video. And um, I'm sure he edits his videos the same way. If you watch all of his montages, they pretty much all kind of the same. The only thing that changes is like the font, the transitions a little different. His reviews look a little better because he got a face cam for it now because you need a face cam for a review. Fair enough, it's YouTube. People like face cam. But... He didn't really, he never really got better at editing. He just kind of hit a little spot with it and he kind of stayed there. And it's the same way with a lot of people. It's the same way with people when it comes to Photoshop, when it comes to editing, when it comes to uh, mastering music, when it comes to producing music. It's the same way. People get to a certain little spot and they feel like they're good at it or they feel like it's good enough and then they keep doing it that way. But DSP editing style in his videos his edited videos are not good enough to try to make a business off of it's not good enough to try to put out and that's going to be your source of income it's just not i understand if he was just some you know some part-time youtuber or he was just fooling around fair enough but you trying to make a living out of this you can't have those are saying, but bland I'm for now, now high school the student gaming season. I'm just quality edited game. videos at the same time same. this year the overwhelming and overabundant feedback that I actually got from the public was, we want to hear Phil talk about other stuff. You don't know how many people contacted me and said, Phil, we're actually disappointed that when you do your podcast, you only do it like once a month, maybe twice a month. We love to hear you just sit and talk, whether it's about gaming or gameplay, whether it's about world events, world news, personal things in your in the past, in your life, whatever it is, like we, for, we like you as a personality and we want to hear you talk about more subjects. And I was like, okay, I kind of understand that. And listen, there's a bunch of YouTubers that do that and that are well-known. Most there, There's YouTubers right now that are well-known for gaming on YouTube that barely game. All they do is they talk about every popular news story when it comes to gaming. Who? They talk about <clears throat> this thing with Konami. They talk about this new release and their thoughts. I don't know who you're talking about. about. Stuff like that. And I never th thought my, of myself like that. I, never I don't watch a lot of YouTubers, YouTube but YouTube I watch more head, than him. Really and I don't know who the fuck you're talking about. A talking about. head, a pundit, someone who's an authority on something who you'd want to hear my thoughts about stuff like that. But the overwhelming kind of feedback I've gotten I guess I'm a talking head for DSP. Do. Like there is a group of people. Maybe it's not the <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, right? But there is a group of people who want to hear me talk about stuff, and it might not always be gaming. All right? And, you know, I look at a channel like the King of Hate Vlogs, where I've had it now for two years. Be honest. Would you really want to hear DSP talk about world events? I don't want to hear anybody on YouTube talk about, like, serious real-life world events, let alone dark side fucking Phil. Hell no. Imagine DSP doing a, 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 a video talking about... Um, ISIS or talking about uh, Paris or talking about immigration. Oh my God, that would be terrible. That would be fucking really awful. Relatively hasn't had much growth. All right. But when you look at what does the best on there, it's my podcast. 
my podcast every time i do it gets great views and people always say we love the podcast because you know you get to finally yeah talk half about of them are the drama subject. views people looking so to watch it for drama what's successful what people are asking for and i have to listen to all this feedback and take it in i'm also looking at other youtube trends and what is popular on youtube right now and i need to factor that into ultimately what i'm going he needs a fact in what's popular on youtube right now so sell out I mean, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. In the long term versus what I've been doing all this year, which kind of was just kind of business as usual. Keep doing raw playthroughs of video games, and every once in a while do a special event like a marathon or something that's outside my comfort zone. But for the most part, oh, he said just focus on the again. same thing I've always done. It's not working anymore. All right, I'll openly admit it. It's not working anymore. And I know it's not that working I three years ago when your views originally went down. Just sit here every day and just play a game like this and do commentary. <clears throat> that's all I'm putting out. Xbox controller. And expect to have this business succeed for any more business. significant amount of time. And I, I fully 100% acknowledge and understand that at this point. Hitting start record on OBS, playing a game and talking is a business. A cut. Yeah, it's not going to happen anymore. Uh, I Motherfucker has no sponsorships except Loot Crate. Up. So here's my three fucking rock can get sponsored plan. by Loot Crate. I don't know why I keep saying three pronged, but it's a catchphrase. So I'm going to keep saying it. So DSP is them now? I don't even think three pronged plan is right. Isn't I'm it three point plan? Three completely different things on YouTube. All right. Three and completely I don't want different say, oh, things. Oh God, the sky is falling. Panic that Phil's abandoning. Let's see all what it things. is. Been with him all this time, and he's gonna start immediately. Let's see what it is. I things. hope you're hype. No. It took Here's us 35 minutes no of his one. video. DSP Gaming, whether it stays with Machinima or it goes with another partnership company, is going to be focused on exactly what it is today: gaming. It's going to be well, your go-to destination gaming. if you want to see me playing a video game at length. You know, if it's a game uh, that I, I try out. And if I you want to see me start a game and not finish it because it got low views or because I got bored, come to DSP Gaming. don't like it and I drop it, so be it. But if it's a game that I'm going to play a full playthrough. If I don't like it and I drop it, so be it. Change your fucking banner then. Change it to not say full oh, game playthroughs. The full unedited playthrough of it there, fucking just like cunt. always. So DSP Gaming basically is not going to change in so much as you're going to see the same stuff raw unedited gameplay on dsp gaming so for all of you who have liked dsp gaming have been subbed to dsp gaming have been following me along since day one and you want to see those raw playthroughs continue thumbs up it's going to continue it's going to be in a slightly diminished capacity which i'm going to explain in a moment but it is still going to continue okay <clears throat> so that's dsp gaming it's going to remain relatively untouched the king of hate vlogs is going to change and evolve. And what I mean by that is the King of Hate Vlogs is now going to basically become my talking head channel. That's going to be the channel where if you want to get my... The King of Hate Vlogs is going to be his talking head channel. Him doing the thing that he said he didn't want to do. Him doing the thing he shat on people for doing for years. Yes, DSP. This is the equivalent of me starting the Patreon. And even then, I never really shot on him for having a patron. I shot on him for how he ran a patron. But DSP has shot on people for doing things in general. And then later on, follows up to do those same things. He shit on people that take donations, takes donations later. He shits on people that do shout outs, does shout outs later. Shits on people being a talking head on YouTube, wants to be a talking head on YouTube. My opinions on a news story you want to get my opinion on um something that's going on like during the holidays you want to get vlogs of me let's be honest here in the united states okay in the united states what is on the news most of the time somebody blowing something up somebody getting shot somewhere some some bullshit no negative shit negative shit that a lot of people probably don't want to hear about on a youtube channel so if DSP makes um, his vlog channel about this, he's going to be talking about terrorist attacks every other day and uh, people getting shot by police every other day and people getting beat up in the mall trying to buy a pair of Jordans and shit. He's going to be Review Tech. He's going to be Review Tech, Review Tech DSP. Not USA. He's going to be Review Tech DSP. 
All right, then. Going somewhere on a trip, DSP tries it, will still continue on that channel, so will Ask the King, the monthly Q&A session. If you want to get my personal thoughts on stuff, the King of Hate Vlogs is going to be the place to go. You're not going to see those kind of videos on DSP Gaming, these talking videos, unless it's something really important that I need to discuss, like this video. You're not going to see this on DSP What about your pre-streams? Those, those are talking videos. Vlogs. And so what I'm going to make an effort to start doing in 2016 is to try... Why is he waiting until next year? Like, okay, I'm going on, I'm going on a slight little tangent here again, but this is why I kind of procrastinate with shit I'm trying to do um, so much because you say to yourself, okay, I want to do this, but I'm going to wait until this time to do it. And then, and then when that time comes, you went so long thinking about doing it, you don't really want to do it. So you, you say, okay, I'm going to do this stream next month. Next month, get there. Oh, I don't really feel like doing it today. Maybe tomorrow. Well, maybe tomorrow. Well, maybe next week. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Okay, the month over with. Okay, um, I'm going to do it as soon as possible when I feel like doing it. I don't feel like doing it today. I don't feel like doing it now. He's going to wait until next year for no fucking reason to do these stupid videos when he's going to be a talking head and no one is going to take him seriously on the subjects he's talking about. But he's going to wait until next year to do this. For no reason whatsoever. When next year gets here, he's not going to feel like doing it. Remember when he was doing montages all uh, every month? Remember how that turned out? I to do way more stuff on that channel and try My to build up videos about bullshit are not getting enough views. What I mean by views. that is, there's lots of potential. If I were, let's say for example, a new story came out this week. Could, you know, Hideo Kojima wanted to really be at, at the Game Awards, but Konami basically contractually told him he can't be there. You don't know how many people message me. Phil, did you hear what happened to K Kojima? Did you? What is your thoughts on that? Can you add anything to that? And I said, you know what? I'll hold off. I won't talk about that news story because I'm going to talk about it on my podcast. I'm not going to do that anymore in 2016. What will happen is I'm going to actually film my reactions to that news story when it's fresh and new. So that wow. day, I'll whoop. He's going to be a camera, really like generic now, YouTuber. Down, I'll let you know my Holy opinions. Holy fucking video shit. Will go live. On the King of Hate vlog. Wow, gonna he's going to be really generic. Reactions to things going on in the world. And it might not just be about gaming. For the first time ever, I'm going to try to branch out. And I'm going to try to cover different kinds of stories. Whether it's pro wrestling. Whether it's politics. To some extent, I'm going to be careful. Because you realize when you start talking okay. about things like religion. And you know stuff like that. Now, oh my god. And I understand how important that stuff is to people. Okay, you know? good. And I have so my, my fear... My fear isn't going to come true. He's going to keep it to bullshit, unimportant shit. Thank fucking God, DSP. You're not going to start talking about riots happening everywhere every other day and shit. Because, man, we don't need more of that on YouTube. And stuff that I, I understand I people, no, people want to see it on YouTube. Subject, and I can I'm, I'm sorry. You, you got a fucking kind of TV. A, you got a, a, a radio. A Just listen to or point of that would help you I'm, maybe I'm, broaden I'm, your horizons. I'll do a video me. about it. Ignore that opinion. But I'm not, and I want to emphasize this. I'm not going to be one of those YouTube commentators who every day puts out a video. I love this YouTuber, and they make videos about this, and I love them. This guy fucking said this, and now... Oh, what a fucking me, 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 me. No, that's because that's garbage. That's garbage fluff Let content. Me rewind. There's tons of YouTubers who do it. They put up for garbage a, content. That's kind of unique. And Half his fucking channel is garbage content. Me making a reaction video to Hideo, to Hideo, wow. Me making a reaction video to Hideo Kojima not being able to accept an award is kind of garbage content, to be completely honest. I mean, it depends on what people want to see. I mean, be honest these videos are kind of garbage content but it depends on what people want to see if people like it they like it if they don't they don't i mean you can't make a video and expect people to like every video you make but dsp is saying videos on youtube are garbage wow regards to certain issues and stuff let's that see I think let's I see what you say if i think i can add to a subject and i can concretely give you some kind of a, a, a perspective or a point of view that would help you to maybe broaden your horizons i'll do a video about it but i'm a point of view that can broaden your horizon. So you mean like change my opinion? Nah, and I want to emphasize this. I'm not going to be one of these YouTube commentators who every day puts out a video for, for drama purposes. Uh, this guy fucking said... But if you made a video about Kojima not being able to accept his award, that would be a drama video. It just would be a drama video about Kojima. It's not a drama video. It would kind of be they 
whatever. This and Ugh. that. Oh, what a fucking me, 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 me. No, that's because that's garbage. That's garbage so, fluff content. And there's tons of YouTubers who do it. They put up fluff content every day for the sake of trying to stir up drama. I've seen YouTubers. <clears throat> it's a positive story. Oh, this game <clears throat> company is going to put out a collection of games. Well, they didn't include this one particular game that's my favorite, so fuck them! And stand there raging in front of the camera for fucking 15 minutes about some little insignificant thing. Looks like a fucking little fucking sissy school. I thought you don't watch YouTubers. Girl complaining about your person. They look like a sissy schoolgirl, a 33 year old man is waving his arms in front of the camera all the time. Not just this time when he making an example. Waves his arms in front of the camera all the time, whining and bitching. Saying another, uh, another person looks like a sissy schoolgirl. A 33-year-old man is calling someone a sissy. A sissy. Wow. Personal gripes when the, the actual news story is a positive. Phenomenal. One. Don't ever expect to hear that from me because that's not the kind of person I am. I'm going to want to add significant commentary to things that are going on in the gaming world but and outside of the But this is subjective. World. So for those of you who Someone like might see person, that yes, sissy and think what he has to say is, is, is like me as a person, worth despite saying. Despite all the slander and bullshit that's happened over the past several years. For those of you who are interested in that stuff, that's what the King of Hate Vlogs is going to become. Now, you're still going to have things like the Weekend Preview. Like I said, DSP tries to ask the King going forward. But that channel is going to now primarily more become me and getting my opinions on stuff and me talking. All right. Ra so the channel is going to go from being about you to being about you rather than kind of right now it's kind of willy-nilly if i'm gonna upload a video or not upload a video to it you never really know when something's coming on the king of hate vlogs now you can kind of understand that this is going to happen all right all now right. the third prong of the three-pronged approach is the completely new one the new spin i've hinted at this for a couple of months now but never definitively explained it and i'm explaining it right now because it's very important that people understand how this is going to work i fully know from looking at YouTube trends and all the feedback that I get, that these, like I said, these long form, unedited, raw playthroughs that I'm doing on DSP Gaming are not what's hugely popular on the internet, and it's not what the common YouTube viewer wants to see anymore. What does the common YouTuber you like to see? They like to see countdowns, the top 10 of this, the top 10 of that, the best and the worst. They want to see montages, the best and funniest moments of playing this particular game. Uh, you know, the 10 biggest fails when I was playing this game, that kind of stuff. They want to see edited game reviews, which I actually did Can implement this year with the Hateful Truth. I've got game screen. footage implemented with me talking and these cuts and, and text and everything. And a lot of people don't even know that because those game reviews go on the King of Hate vlogs where a lot of the people who watch my gameplay don't even watch. So they don't even know that that exists and that I upgraded the, the, the reviews this year. So that kind of stuff is going to go on this new channel that's going to primarily focus on edited content, on abridged versions of playthroughs, on countdowns, things like that. So... Wow, you know, DSP. I realize that this is some great information. Shit I think that already the reason know. that my channel would be a little bit more unique is because I play a lot of fucking games. Unlike a lot of YouTubers who do that kind of stuff, I have the unique perspective that I do a full playthrough. So I can draw upon the 40 hours of gameplay, you know, of me playing a particular game to pull those snippets of examples of things I want to talk about in a review or a best of montage to do a good job and do a really complex kind of, of edited deal. The same kind of video that I was putting out on DSP so, earlier let me this get year. Remember straight. I did the best and worst. His review is going to be better because he beat the game. Worst of Pretty much. Light, the best and worst of the order Just assume no one else the beats the game January, except February, for you, DSP. March, April. I was doing a good job with these montages, but again, the overwhelming feedback I was getting after doing it for about four months was, well, it's cool you're doing it, but we're not really watching it anymore because you upload so many videos to DSP Gaming, those videos get completely lost in the shuffle. That's bullshit. We don't really have time to watch them. Because That's complete bullshit. He making that up. When a new one people comes didn't out. watch him because so people didn't this. see him, sure. It's be a new channel. But people didn't care, people sure. But people didn't tell him I'm not watching it because you upload too much. Sub to this channel. So here you go. Immediately, all those people who complained that I'll never sub to DSP Gaming because my inbox will be flooded all day with raw gameplay videos because you upload too many. Now you can go to this new destination channel. Okay, I already found a hole in that argument. People said they won't sub to DSP. People didn't sub to DSP. People, people still don't sub to DSP because they upload too much. But guess what? Those people still want to see full playthroughs, which is why they watch DSP. They're not going to sub to a freaking montage channel because they don't want to see montages. They want to see full playthroughs. They just want to see full playthroughs, but they don't want to see 25 parts uploaded a day of two different playthroughs every day 
They don't want to open their YouTube channel. And, well, I want to catch up on DSP playing Fallout. Okay, uh, part, okay, uh, part 125. Okay, I was on part 125. All right. Let me go, uh, okay, I'm on part 125. Okay, he finished part 170. Okay, each video is about 20 minutes long. All right. So let me watch part 125 through part 140 tonight. And then they come back tomorrow, and now part 200 is uploaded. So now they got another fucking 50 videos to watch. Those people that want to see full playthroughs are not going to go to a stupid fucking montage channel. You can sub to that, and once a week you'll have the best of the week. Here's the coolest stuff that I did this week in a, in a five-minute snippet comp. Best of the week? Relation, right? Five minutes? <laughs> Here's a cool countdown from my seven years of YouTube presence. I've taken some of the best stuff that I did, the best villains, the best heroes, the best. You know what's going to happen? DSP is going to go, he's going to make forum posts, well, forum topics, and is going to say vote for the best moments. He's going to have people vote on this shit. He's not going to make these countdowns on his own. He's going to make people vote for them. Shooters, all these things I can draw upon to make these series for this channel. Okay. Plus, people are going to vote they, for this and he's going to make the video over there. And will He's too fucking lazy to, for the first to time look ever. this shit up on I his own. I fully believe that if I take that kind of edited content and I separate it from DSP Gaming, that it could be successful and it will it be won't successful. Be. Because people will now say, well, I don't have time for DSP Gaming, but I could sub to this channel. And a couple times a week, Phil puts out a new video that's edited and it's nice and stylized. And I can watch it within nice a few minutes and, and I can enjoy it versus going over to DSP Gaming. And there's freaking five hours of gameplay a day that I could never catch up with. Okay, and that's what the common YouTuber wants. They don't want their inbox flooded with 700 videos a day. They want one or two videos, right? Oh, Phil uploaded a new video today. Let me check it out versus, oh, well, it's a new day and here's another 400 videos from Phil. Now, listen, I understand there are my core fan base, the people who've been with me since day one. Your core fan base were like eight DSP people, gaming, which is why I'm not stopping. I'm just separating the content. You're going to have DSP gaming separating the content. I lost a lot of DSP. So let me just move them up to like 69. Like no, let's move them up to 70. New channel for all the edited content, the reviews and stuff like that. OK, <clears throat> three prongs. I don't know I'm saying that. But here's what's going to happen. And I thought about this hard, how I could make this work with my current schedule. It's this simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change up my daily schedule. I'm only going to play video games once a day, but I'm going to extend the length of time that I play them. So right now, five hours, the way that I do it is I remember a long time ago, probably like two or three months ago. Now I said this time of the year and when games, when the game season get heavy in general, so it could be in like March or some shit. DSP should do three streams a day. One early in the day, one in the middle of the day, one at the end of the day. First one could be like 9, 10 a.m., three hours. Second one could be like 3, 4 p.m., three hours. Third one could be, I don't know, 9, 10 p.m., his time, two hours. And he would get through games way faster and make the videos a little bit longer, make the videos like, I don't know, 30, 30 to 45 minutes each, no matter what. Don't make videos less than 30 minutes long. He would get through games way faster, and his playthroughs would be done quicker. Because at the end of the day, he is a Let's Player. A Let's Player can't fucking do Let's Plays, and it takes him a, a month and a half to be the game. So DSP <laughs> has followed, um, he followed my advice, uh, as in, of course not, of course he didn't. So now he's going to play games less. He's going to play one time a day but for more time. So he plays games five hours a day. He plays a, he has a three hour stream in the middle of the day and then a two hour stream later on at night. So let's see if he's going to play five hours or if he's going to play less than five hours. Start my let's stream see. around 1230 ish. The gameplay usually doesn't start till 1 PM or later. And then it goes to around 4 PM. Then I stop for dinner. Then I come back around say 7 PM and I play for about another two and a half hours. And sometimes I stream it. And sometimes I he making up times by the way. He comes, he, he streams around 12.30 or 1 and finishes around 4.30 and then starts around 7 and play for two and a half. Bullshit. Whatever. I don't and it's very confusing and yada, yada, yada. The bottom line is it's too much. It's, you never know what's really going to happen. My schedule changes like crazy. It's very confusing and it doesn't really leave time for anything else. It just leaves time for me to play games, play games, play games. 
in 2016, I'm going to try something different. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start earlier. I'm going to start a full hour earlier every day. So instead of starting my stream at 1230, it's going to start around 1130 p.m. Pacific time. Excuse me, a.m. Pacific time. I screwed that up. And it's going to probably go from around noonish to around 4 p.m. First of all, if you um, if you have a job like a normal nine to five job, like he shits on all the time, you can't even watch his streams. <laughs> 11.30 a.m. his time, Pacific time, 11.30 a.m. So that's going to be 2.30 p.m. No, uh, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30 p.m. my time. 1.30 p.m. 1.30 p.m. DSP is single-handedly killing the clone machine. 1.30 p.m.? Jesus Christ. So he's going to be streaming. If you live in, if you live in like, uh, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, he's going to be streaming 1.30 p.m. your time. And if you live on the West Coast, he's going to be streaming at 11.30 in the morning. And that's the only time he's going to stream. Who the fuck is going to be able to watch him at 11.30 in the morning? People that live in like England or some shit? <sighs> so we're talking around four hours of gameplay. The times he streamed already wasn't that good. And uh, he, he's making it worse because guess what? At 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, right? So it's going to be like 3.30 p.m. if you live in New York. Those people, like for instance, if you were a kid in school, you can't watch him at all. You can't watch him live. If you go into school, you can't watch him live, no matter what, unless you want to watch him in, in class or something on your phone. Uh, people that live in like the U.K. can't watch him live unless they stay up really late at night or unless they wake up really early in the morning or a mixture of both. Um, people that live on the West Coast probably won't really be able to watch him because he's going to be streaming at 11.30 in the morning. Who wants to watch a freaking streamer every day at 11.30 in the morning? I mean, you won't be able to do that consistently, right? I don't think most people will be able to do that consistently. But, um, okay, he's starting an hour early, so that means... Uh, and instead of five hours of playing games, day, four hours at release, least. It's an ongoing game that I see how long he's going to play. And if you're listening to what I'm saying here, basically I'm saying if I'm only playing four, maybe some days if I go extra long and I start early or I go late five hours a day, it's going to be a little bit less gameplay. <clears throat> All right. But what that's going to allow me to do is later in the. Wow, DSP, you are a fucking moron. So you're going to start playing an hour early and finish around the same time and not play at night. So you're going to finish games even slower now. All right. Now, think about this. We're going to we're going to make up make up an example. I'll come on, I'll come on up with this off the top of my head. So if it's, if it's shit, sorry. We have a failing business, right? Burger time, uh, not the video game. We have a failing burger, a failing burger business, right? No one wants to buy our fucking burgers. No one. No one is buying a burger. Some people, sometimes people come through to buy fries. Sometimes people come through, they might buy like one cheeseburger just to see if it's good. You know, sometimes people come through, they might buy a shake. People come through to use the bathroom all the time on the weekends. But our burgers are not selling. All right. So, I mean, we, we have awful management. So instead of us making new burgers or trying to get like promotion or trying to promote ourselves, better no we don't do that we change our schedule of selling burgers so instead of selling burgers from noon to like 9 p.m we're going to sell burgers from 11 a.m to 8 p.m we're going to start one hour early and we're not even going to finish at the same time do you think those burgers are going to sell better now do you think more people are going to come in and say holy shit the burger place is open at 11 a.m Whoa, I can't wait to buy fucking burgers now because I, I just couldn't buy a burger at noon. I have to buy burgers at 11 a.m. Do you think the business will do better because of that? Probably not. But let's imagine that burger place, right? That burger place sold fries and burgers. And then the fries started to sell a little bit worse. So they stopped selling fries. Months later, they changed the schedule. And sell fries, they sell fries now, the fries of the montages. They sell fries now, but they sell fries at a different store and at a different time. So if you came to the burger store to get fries, you can still get those fries. But you have to go to a different place. You have to go to the, you have to go to the fry store at a different time to get those fries. And you get less fries. 
because the fries on the montage. Instead of you getting the forty minute montage or a twenty minute montage or whatever, you're getting the five minute montage once a week. So you get less fries. You have to go to a different place to get the fries. And the fries are gonna be even shittier because the person is making fries with a different intent. Today, I'll take my break for dinner or whatever. I'm gonna be able to come back and I'm gonna be able to focus on, oh, was there a news story today about something I need to talk about? I can do a vlog about it. Or, oh, it's time for me to work on that montage for the week or. This is the amazing part. You a full-time YouTuber, a full-time YouTuber basically a full-time let's play like let's plays is what he does that's what he gets paid for for let's plays so you're going to do less let's plays and more news stories and more montages but you can't do all three 24 hours in a day you play video games for four hours a day it might take 30 minutes to make a video depending on what you're talking about it shouldn't take you more than two hours to make a video if it's just you talking by yourself and you're not reacting to anything or anything like that and you don't have to pause the video and stuff like this like when i do videos like this but and it might take it should take you i don't know two hours to edit four or five hours worth of footage if you complete garbage at editing where does the other time go he's so busy dsp is so busy so busy or, you know the best of the week or that new game review or whatever uh, it is. right man. now <clears throat> i could have put out three game reviews in the past month and i have no time to do it because i'm still playing new games i don't I he has no time to put out a game review because he's too busy playing games for less than six hours a day for his youtube channel i want to not have that happen so i have a dedicated part of my day to work on these things that aren't just raw gameplay because the raw gameplay let's give them, the bottom let's line give them is not going to pay the bills DSP anymore isms. even though it has in the past and it is the we got raw gameplay and now. work I'm and all of these words with machinima <clears throat> and obviously there's been a, a, a decline over the past several years i've got to diversify myself i've got to get myself outside of the confines of all these issues all right Confine. and the bottom line is this you type in dsp or dsp gaming or dark side film you see all drama all <clears throat> right every video you fucking see is some high school drama on you High school drama. Because all my videos aren't, don't even show up in the search anymore, just the hater videos do. Hater so videos. If I make a new channel, I rebrand it as something, <clears throat> I have a chance to kind of give myself a fresh... Yet again, I, I explained this before a couple of months ago. DSP wants to purposely misguide the common YouTube viewer. He wants the common YouTube viewer to find his shit instead of good shit. And he wants to trick them into watching him. Start, right? And a, a chance to actually start where from people who maybe don't give a shit about the drama well i don't care what this guy says about phil did 10 years ago uh because 10 years ago montage that was hilarious and i watched the montage that's all i care about hilarious and that's what my goal is to try to rebrand and have a channel that's separate from all the ongoing bullshit of the other two channels it's not gonna work it though all right <clears throat> so yeah it's gonna mean a major change yet again burger time again imagine McDonald's, right? McDonald's, just just imagine McDonald's was going completely out of business. McDonald's started selling burgers that had like uh, they was undercooked. Some people died. Some people like got poison bomb food poisoning. You know, people was getting in shootouts and stabbings and shit at McDonald's. McDonald's went completely under, right? But before McDonald's went completely under, they made a new burger company and they sold the same burgers except with a different wrapping. And they call themselves a different name. They call themselves um, McD's, McD's Burgers. And people was like, oh, McD's Burgers. This looks interesting. And then they ate a McD's Burger and said, wait, this is fucking McDonald's. Do you think McD's Burgers would be successful for more than a week before people figure out what's going on? No, McD's Burgers would not last. DSP wants to make his own McD's Burgers, except about him. So it's going to be him purposely trying to mislead viewers and purposely trying to trick people into watching his garbage instead of avoiding his garbage, which is what people normally do on YouTube. It's to my schedule. Good job. It is. It's going to be me doing gameplay maybe four hours a day, sometimes less, sometimes more. By the way, wow. I just want to make it abundantly clear. If there's a brand new game that I'm really hyped for, I'm not against doing gameplay all day like I used to. It's just that it's going to be that's like you the used exception to rather than the norm. Like you okay? used to in 2010 or like you used to day, now. Sense, okay, I'm going to live stream that one time. Because now it's kind of shit. Oh, I'm going to live stream twice today. And what are the times I'm going to live stream and all that? It would clear up all the confusion with all that. You know what I confusion. mean? Confusion. All those stupid viewers that can't fucking read a text document schedule. So that's the approach that I'm going to be taking in 2016. And in fact, 
it's going to be relatively quickly because, like I said, I have to make a decision about staying with Machinima in the next 10 days. Once How that decision is, is made, then oh, I have to start working immediately on, on this new channel. I have to try to think of a name for it, done. how to brand it, and I have to figure out, do I want to partner? Yet again, this goes back to um, a video I uploaded like two days ago when I said DSP is Activision. He has short-term, profit-driven thinking. And guess what? Him doing his new channel to purposely mislead viewers, that's short-term, profit-driven thinking. Because the channel might do good for a month, it might do good for two months. Then people are going to realize you kind of shit, people are going to realize your videos are kind of shit, and then that channel is going to tank. Just like McD's opening up that new burger place. They fool a few people for a month or two, maybe a, maybe, may, maybe a month or two, a couple of weeks at best. People buy some burgers, they make some money, people figure out it's McDonald's under a new name, and they shit on them and then they get out of there. DSP, no, that's, you don't fix a business by trying to make a, a, a quick dollar as fast as possible. Because this bullshit is trying to make a quick dollar as fast as possible. I'm going to do shitty news story videos every day. Guess what? That's quick money. That's making the quick money. If you do a news video, right? If you talk about, okay, um, if Bud Light changed the can design, right? And I make a fucking video talking about the Bud Light new can design. It's going to get some decent views for like a week. And then people won't care anymore. And then it won't get any views at all. These little short term news videos, they're going to get good views at that moment. And then they won't get any views in the long run. So it might get 20,000 views day one, 10,000 views day two. By about a week later, it's going to get zero views every day because the news is old and no one wants to hear about it anymore. Short term, short term business. DSP already was running a short term business and he wants it to be even more short term now. Good job. That channel with Machinima as well, or do I want to go with another company? And the bottom line is I have to go with whoever's going to make it a managed partnership. Because if I have and a new channel get you the most and 90% of the content I put on the channel gets flagged for content, content ID and I can't monetize any of it, then there was no monetize. point in having the new channel anyway. You know what I mean? So I, whether it's Machinima or it's another company, I have this new channel is going to be partnered with them, and that's going to be one of my focuses. And it's going to start as early as very early 2016, all right? And I know some people say, well, Phil, your year-end series are coming up. Why don't you just do it now? Well, see, that's we. I think that would be jumping the gun. Because how can you do year-end series when there was nothing before it? All of a sudden, there's a new channel. Oh, here's the funniest moments of the year. But of what? You know, people, you have to do that on DSP Gaming. You know what I mean? So as soon as we get through all the year-end series, that's when I'm really going to start hardcore, dedicating myself and working to the new schedule and these three initiatives that are separate from each other, okay? So, number one. Please send me your feedback on the, the plan that I just laid out for you. Whether it's via email, darksidephil at hotmail.com. Whether you tweet me at they, uh, at they call me DSP. Whether it's discussion on my forums. Whatever it is. Please. This is phenomenal. Give him feedback on this, right? He, know he, was going to, he knew he was going to disable the likes and dislikes and comments. So the only way we can give him feedback is if we can tweet him and if we're not muted or blocked. We can post on his forums, but we have to not be banned. And if we make a new account and we post and we got in our account, say one post, he's not going to trust us and other people are not going to trust him. So don't even waste your fucking time with that. So uh, you can't tweet him if you're not muted or blocked. If you make a new account and tweet him, he's probably not going to trust you. Uh, you can't comment under the video, so you can't get feedback that way. You can't give him feedback on the forums because they won't trust the new account. Um, email him. It probably takes DSP two days to read fucking emails. Look how professional he is, right? Send me your ideas, all right? I purposely left the, the fucking comments off on this video. I left the likes and dislikes off on this video because I know ultimately what will happen is people will watch Drama. this. They won't watch the whole video, first of all. These same people who want to do negative shit about me will just spin it in any negative I'm way watching that they the possibly whole video. can. They'll make it all about themselves and their fucking agendas in the comments. We'll make it about ourselves. So you can't watch the video and you lose the message how? of the video, all right? So that's why it's all off. I just Whatever. want everyone to be focusing on what's going on. So don't... Focus on me. Don't pay attention to that other shit. Fuck leave that. Leave a comment. Instead, contact me personally. Let me know what you think. Send me ideas for cool names for this I should channel, come up right? with an, an, an idea and email DSP. I'm doing that. I need that. feedback. Maybe. And I love it when people actually send me legit... This year in particular, I got so much just really constructive feedback. He loves it when people send him really feedback. I, I need to send him feedback. to do better. 
with my and see if he replied to it. He I won't. Got from so by all means, <laughs> he won't. Send me your feedback. All right? But I'm, I'm going to do that anyway. And I'm, I'm going to think of something in the next 24 note. hours and I'm, I'm going to email let you know, him. Ultimately, people are going to hear this and say, man, Phil's taking a pay cut now. And who knows what's going to happen with this new channel and things are very uncertain. I've been here before. You know, I've been here two times before. Fucking head wag. Once I've when been originally here before. I got laid off from my job and then I got kicked out of YouTube analytics. It's almost over with, analytics, It's almost YouTube, over with. Whatever the fuck it was called. AdSense and then Blip TV. And then my contract got renegotiated in late 2012. It's like I've been here before. And I've made it work every single time. And I'm fully confident here that if you are as believing in me as I am, that we can make this work. But that's the thing. People have Do you to have really that believe in yourself, they have DSP? To have that positivity moving forward and saying, yeah, this sounds like a good plan. We're going to get more content of vlogging. We're going to get plan. more content that's edited. We're going to still get the same. I know what I'm going to email DSP about. I already fucking know. I know exactly what I'm going to email them about. I'm going to email them after I'm done with the video. Here's exactly what you can do to help me out. There's, I think, four primary things. I should have written these down because I had the idea before I started talking. Four things we can do to help them out. Let's see if I guess they're right. Okay, my guess. Spread the word. Um, watch the videos, Patreon, and um, somebody on Twitter told me soap. Soap is a good a good fourth one. Or he could just say support the business on Etsy or some to shit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Successful. Number one, please by all means continue to watch, mm -hmm. continue to spread the word. A lot of people mm -hmm. right now don't even realize I exist anymore because because your I videos got are shuff shit. Shuffled under the rug, you know, swept under everything. During the whole reorganization of YouTube in 2012, you should have changed with the times. People who weren't doing the long when the business gameplay, doesn't change with the times, they fall apart and go away. Criteria. And people don't even realize that I do game playthroughs anymore. There's people out there who probably would love to watch the Fallout 4 playthrough and don't even know that I, I did it. So please continue to watch. Please continue to spread the word. Please continue to be nice on social media and to share stuff and to give me feedback. Everything you've been doing, you've be been nice doing a great on the job. internet. If you are a fan of my stuff, I can't Amazing. thank you enough. You've actually kind of gone above and beyond, especially those of you who have DSP. Come on, give us the rest of them. To try to talk to me Jesus on social Christ. media because I know that there's these fucking sick people who will attack people for sick no people. reason just because they sent me a positive tweet. It's absolutely out of control. And I also want to say, I said a video about this on Thanksgiving, but I'll say it again. Thank you to the silent majority, because I know the vast majority of people who watch my video content do not comment, do not contact me, do not send me feedback. They're just there to watch every day, and they're the silent supporters that don't want to get involved in all the YouTube drama bullshit, and they just want to see things move forward positively. Please just keep doing what you're move doing. You're doing a great job, all right? You're doing a great job. A great job watching my videos. Number two, when all these new initiatives take off, please, even if you're, oh man, you know, I'm just interested in seeing Phil play some raw video games. It's what he's been doing for the years. You the know, fuck is I, a I, raw video game? Is it a turkey? About. At least give it a shot to take a look at the new stuff I'm doing on the vlogging channel and to give Wait. it up. So his first thing is to watch the videos and spread the word. His first thing was three things, by the way. It was watch the video, spread the word, be nice. Yeah, watch the video, spread the word, and be nice. Three things are one thing. Uh, He's not good at counting, apparently. And his second thing is to watch the videos on a new channel. So the first two are watch I'll the videos. The new stuff that I'm doing on the new channel, whatever I end up calling it. And if you don't like it, fine. But at least, please give it a shot. Please don't be closed-minded and say, well, I only like this one little thing Phil does. You know, that's the thing. I get the feeling that most people will only, oh, I, uh, I only know Phil from this. That's all I care about. If you give it a shot, right? Just you told us to that. give it a shot Even during your 3DS you playthroughs like and what happened to them. They're never going to happen again. But let's say it Shut takes off and up. it becomes popular. I'm not giving that's going to allow me to continue DSP. to do the raw gameplay. You know what I you mean? Throw like, shit if away if when that becomes give you popular, it still helps this. If the vlogging becomes popular, it helps the other two. And that's the thing. They all kind of go hand in hand. If one thing explodes, they all positively benefit and allow me to do it all in the long term as a full-time thing. So please. You've been doing it for five years. It's been long term enough. Move on by all means check it out and again if you like it spread the word about it and i will say this this is probably the first real time in a mainstream video i'm appealing for you to do what i'm about to ask you to do like from the now on if you're watching a gameplay video of mine a vlog video like of the mine, video edit video edited video of mine or whatever please if you like the video please like it on youtube give it a thumbs up because right now there is a ridiculous amount of kids and that's all they are immature dsp you fucking idiot 
where you publicly talk about people shitting up your videos, shitting on your videos, trashing your videos, how you want to word it. When you publicly talk about people doing that and fucking your videos up, it makes more people do it, you fucking dummy. How stupid can you be? It's a bunch of kids disliking all my videos, so slave fans, please like all my videos. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. Make sure to thumbs up the video. Maybe you could spend five seconds of editing and edit in a message that say thumbs up the video. Do that too. But guess what, DSP? When you shit on people for disliking your videos and you stop pretending that it doesn't annoy you, you make the people want to do it more. How dumb can you be? It's amazing. This dude then had a YouTube channel of some sort for seven years and been doing YouTube as a full-time career job, whatever, for the last five years. And he still doesn't know how to handle running a YouTube, uh, a YouTube account. Why would you say this, DSP? And remember when DSP lied to everybody for months and months and months, maybe even years, and said likes and dislikes don't matter on the video? Apparently they do matter a little bit because you're asking people to like your video. But you're asking people to like your video under a video that has likes and dislikes disabled because you don't want your video to look bad. Little All right, kids then. who think it's kids. funny. Oh, I'm going to give DSP a million they think it's thumbs funny. down on this vlog. Har, 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 har. And you watch the vlog and you're like, there's nothing in this vlog that, like, wow, there was nothing to react to negatively. And people even leave comments like that. There was nothing to react to negatively. Why would people, you watch this one gameplay video in, my, in, in an ongoing playthrough. Everything in that video was good. You know, he's doing a side quest and he, and he you know, he did. Everything in the video was good. That's subjective. Commentary. Why are there so many dislikes? That's not a fact. It's this one viral group of people, people who, by the way, like to call themselves my critics. Yeah, because what does a critic about the do when someone again? puts out something that's fun and positive and people enjoy? They go say it sucks. Like with the Rockathon I just did, where the vast majority of people who've checked out the Rockathon said it was very enjoyable for whatever reason. Maybe, But none of those people was blocked or banned or muted or silenced in any other way. Of course they're going to say it's good because they're not blocked or banned or silenced or muted in any way. But you see how DSP loves to bunch people up? Apparently, all of the people that don't like DSP said the Rockathon was shit. You think I'm a good singer? Maybe you think I sucked terribly and it was embarrassing. I don't care. As long as you enjoyed it, you enjoyed it. And those people went and thumbed it up. But then, oh, I don't like Phil on Twitter. I don't like Phil. We don't like Phil. Go thumbs down the video. That's, That's called a bandwagon approach to fucking... As a matter of fact, let me prove myself right or wrong. Apparently, those people are sociopathic, too. So if you dislike a DSP video and don't have a, a legit reason in his world to dislike it, you a sociopath. Um, okay. Let me see. Did I dislike the Rockathon? I have no fucking idea. Let me see. I didn't like or dislike it. So there you go. John, this to be honest, I really don't dislike or like most DSP videos I just kind of so he he really has to piss me off for me to dislike a video like he really has to say some right? obnoxious shit that doesn't shit. fucking improve anything and that's like what this. happens people oh let's go and hundreds of thumbs down on shit so now I'm appealing to those of you who actually like the stuff that I put out from now on you should have been make a doing conscious it effort. I know I've never really emphasized this before but if you're watching a video it's a lie. He did emphasize it before. He just did it during the actual stream when he was saying, if you like the stream, please like the stream. Video of mine and you like the stuff, thumb it up on YouTube. Because the bottom line is, if there was an organic amount of people who said, oh, I like this video, thumb it up, the negatives, would, the thumbs down and this movement wouldn't affect anything anymore. The problem is, I was the one guy on YouTube who never asked for thumbs up. But DSP, I thought likes and dislikes didn't matter. But now they affect stuff. So did you just lie to us when you told us they didn't matter? Who never OMG. would say, oh, please give it a like, give it a favorite and all that shit. I was always of the impression that people would just watch and keep watching if they enjoyed. And that's the truth. The people never stopped watching, but you had this increase. People never people stopped watching, but I thought the down. views declined. So please counter that with positivity if you can. That's really going to help me in the long run, okay? But I thought they didn't help. Number three. The third way you can help me to be so number one is watch the videos and um, be nice to me on the Internet and um, spread the word. Number two is watch the videos on the new channel. And number three is like the videos successful with this new initiative. 
It was a big part of my business. No, number issue. two is watch the videos on a new channel and like the video. So we got here, five it's points. It's a big reason why I was two successful this year. Now. And quite honestly, it's pretty much the primary reason why in 2015 I was able to not only improve, but I was able to do outside the box stuff different from what I would usually number three do. Number three is Patreon. The that I'm still so doing watch the videos, like Patreon. the videos, and Patreon. And I'm not here to say money, 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 views, views, views. But I'm not here to say money, 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 views, views, views. The video exists because you're going to be making less money and you have low views. But you cannot deny the positive effects that Patreon had on my positive effects, a microphone um, that doesn't make a difference, soundproofing that barely makes a difference, and a green screen you don't use. Positive improvements. Business this year, despite all the negative spins and the Phil's a scam artist and all this fucking crazy shit go. that people want people to believe because of the negative disgusting we shit. Go, that they we, do. we go break a hundred on this. Look concretely at 2015 as a year, much better audio quality because of this soundproofing phone, because of this right here, right? Much better visual quality because of the PC that I bought and maintained, the fact that I got better editing software this year. That you fucking asshole you got the new computer way before patreon and adobe adobe premiere isn't going to make your videos look better and you barely even put out edited videos this video isn't even edited that was very pricey but apparently that, that, that enhanced the visual pieces, quality so i could do better video editing and stuff like that for my reviews and my year-end videos apparently you know, dsp bought a computer this year shine. And we just the don't know I, about it. I was able to do a crazy amount of fun marathons, indie game marathons of games I never would have played outside of an indie marathon. I played Minecraft for the first time and got a whole new perspective on the whole fucking situation. You got paid $500, I played a full playthrough of Persona 4, which I didn't even have to do. You got paid, but I did because I liked the game so much. 700 my 600? eyes to how good it was that I decided to do an insanely long playthrough of that game. Uh, Yakuza 4, which now, of course, is going to lean into you got a Yakuza paid $1, 5 to play that. pretty awesome. I played Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2. You got paid $1,250 uh, and I also, I did to play an that. awesome Halloween special, the first two one times. I was able to do in years. And, see you do this and I did times. a cool rockathon, the first time I ever you played a music game. You got paid $1,250 to stuff play that, and you got the game for free. It was possible directly because of patron support. And I said it once, and I'll say it again. You don't have to pledge. Don't feel pr like pressured to pledge. Don't think that I only appreciate if you pledge. That's ridiculous. The vast amount of majority who watch my stuff don't pledge to my Patreon. That's what's keeping me afloat. But for those who have pledged, thank you so much because you've allowed me to continue to do what I love full time. And I really feel that with these contract negotiations that ultimately everyone is going to go through, and YouTube has changed greatly since it did when I first signed with Machinima in 2011, it's a much mm. different place to be now with well, ad contracts and performance and shit like that that's all behind the scenes and you don't have to worry about. The majority of people who are successful... That's all behind the scenes and you don't have to worry about, but DSP talks about it every other day. So you have to worry about this bullshit if you're a well, DSP fan. have something like a Kickstarter or a Patreon or it's something like having a fucking to financially baby supplement what shit. they're making on YouTube because it's not viable anymore. So thank you for embracing it this year. I said it before and I'll say it again. A dollar a month goes a huge fucking way. Remember, he not pressuring us to pledge. He doesn't need us to pledge. But he needs us to maybe give a dollar a month. Apparently, Some people don't realize that. Oh, Phil just wants us to give fifty to a hundred dollars a month and wants to suck us dry. That's not the case. The most successful people on Patreon have a large group of people who give a tiny amount. If ten percent of the people who watched my Fallout Four playthrough gave me a dollar because they liked it, I probably wouldn't have to worry about any of this shit ever again. You know what I mean? But that's the reality of it is that you need to make people realize that. That is for as little as a dollar a month. But I thought you wasn't and, you know, pressuring us to pledge. Help, especially these past couple of months but now you need I a really dollar a month. Negative hit to my business because Come of the on, false copyright man. strikes. I really have to say the Patreon stuff helped. So thank you. And please, if that's the third way you can help me, if you are enjoying the content, you love the fact that I'm still doing this full time. Wow, these are new ideas Phil's going to work wow, on in 2016. DSP. You really milking this. Uh, you really milking this. Dark side this full. Full. A no, it's three. Side of that is if you want to maybe get some cool products, my girlfriend Leanna has. Yeah, her it's own three. It is three. Pledge there, and it's the holiday season right I didn't now. I do that. I skipped forget. past a fucking soul plug by accident, but it is three. The first one is watch the videos. Well, each one is multiple things because DSP can't count. Well, the first one is watch the videos, spread the word, be nice on the internet. The second one is watch the videos on a new channel and like videos that you actually like 
which is a dumb thing to say. And the third one is Patreon and soap. So each each part of the three prong plan is more than one thing. Might be a good idea, good okay? So that's the third way you can help me. Now, the fourth way, and I'm going to end four. the video okay, with this. Four. The fourth and final way that you can help me right now in this time of need is very How? simple. Don't listen to the drama. All right. The fourth way we can help him is ignore stuff on the internet, basically. All right. Okay. Ultimately, let's see. Let's see where this goes. Day. I'm just let's a see guy who wakes up, tweets a couple times, gets on his setup here, plays games for a few hours, having fun, and shares those experiences. Having with fun. You. Period. It doesn't matter just give him a cool what out of context fucking thing I said in a vlog three years ago. It doesn't matter what person's going to come out of the woodwork to talk shit about Phil today and try to start drama. It doesn't matter if one day I was in a bad mood and on a pre-stream I might have said something or snapped at someone in the fucking stream chat. Don't do like that. Like any fucking human possibly would because they're Try human, to do it, less. Because I'm me and I have these, again, hundreds of sociopathic fucking idiots following me around and stalking my every move that they have to... DSP, you're supposed to be being... You're supposed to be moving forward positively. This is not moving forward positively. I'm going to move forward positively. Please support me. Thank you for the support you've given me. Now, listen to me finish the video off. The fourth way you can help me is to not listen to these people. And I'm going to talk about these people for five minutes straight. And I'm going to call them all kind of names and make them, and make them, make them angry. You know what this is? This is you. you. You know people don't like you. You know people don't like you, DSP. And you combat that by talking about the people and shitting on the people to make them not like you more because that's gonna work that helps it helps to do that <sighs> wow you're that really dumb dsp weakness, right don't buy in to any of it the bottom line is if you enjoy my videos that's all that should matter none of this periphery bullshit about myself and my family and my past relationships if you enjoy the videos, that all that's all that should matter. So why are you telling us about your contract getting changed at Machinima? If we enjoy your videos, that's all that should matter. We shouldn't care about how much you get paid, right? Relationships and things I said years ago and this and that. It always seems they can find something. It's all the flavor of the day. What's the new gossip? What's the new... People can come up with new gossip and new bullshit on you every day because you have new bullshit on you every day. Stop saying dumb shit and doing dumb shit. Just like this video right here. I wouldn't have made a fucking video about DSP today. But then he announced his fucking nonsense drama video. And I guess, I mean, let's be honest, call it a drama video, even though it's not really drama, but it's an attention, an attention video. You know, it's, it's look at me. My contract is going to get changed. Um, please pledge and watch the videos and buy soap. I wouldn't have made a video about DSP today, but then DSP made this video. So now I'm making this video. If he don't make a dumb video like this tomorrow, then I won't make a video like this tomorrow. That's kind of how, that's kind of how this is at this point. But he tries to make it seem like I'm finding stuff to make videos about. Like I'm going back to a vlog he made in 2010 and saying, let me complain about what he said in 2010 because that's still relevant. But yet again, it's DSP, so he bunches people, he bunches everybody in the same category. So you don't know who the fuck he's talking about. You don't know if you're talking about the dude that stayed out on the street that don't like one of his videos he saw. You don't know if you're talking about the cat that fucking hissed when his voice came on the TV. Or you don't know if you're talking about you. TMZ-like story that we TMZ. can try to spam on the internet about Phil to spam try to get cheap internet. views and attention for ourselves. Cheap views and the attention. bottom line is it's the only thing that we're known for is negativity and shit-throwing at people. But guess what? DSP, one of the only things he's known for is negativity. So, okay. shit shoveling. That's what they call it. The shit shoveling circus. When you have nothing to offer to the world, you shovel the shit at others. He's telling people that don't like him that they have nothing to offer to the world. Do you think this is going to make people leave you alone, DSP? Phenomenal. Because that way you get fucking attention. And that's all it is. Don't but guess what? Guess what? The only way DSP is getting attention is through videos like this. 
So can I say you have nothing better to offer to offer to the world, DSP? Because the only thing you are known for is playing games on the internet. And and not even really that. The only thing you're known for at this point is uploading videos like this. That just scream, pay attention to me, please. Big news, capital letters, exclamation marks, all that shit. Let's refresh the page. We're on an hour and 26 seconds. Let's refresh the page. 2,600 views. And it's got uploaded late as fuck. I guarantee you by the end of, it's today Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. Wednesday. I guarantee you by the end of Wednesday, December 9th, this is going to have 10,000 views. It's going to have more views than anything he, anything else he uploaded in the last month. But he tries to shit on other people that make videos about him and say they only doing it for attention. They only doing it for views. But you can say the same thing for him. Fair enough if you want to shit on me for something, but you, you can't shit on me for something if you're doing the exact same thing. These videos get you a lot of views too. Sorry, DSP. And I'm not getting paid for views, so it, it, it helps you out more than it helps me out. Just saying. But what, I'm on sure somebody about will try to Phil twist to try that to get cheap views and attention so for ourselves. Because up. the bottom line is, it's the <laughs> only thing that we're known for is negativity and shit throwing at people, shit shoveling. That's what they call it, the shit shoveling circus. When you have nothing to offer to the world, you shovel the shit at others because that way you get fucking attention, and that's all it is. Don't pay attention to it. You see people talking stupid shit like that, you fucking block them the second you see them, whether it's on YouTube, on Twitter, on fucking Facebook, on fucking Instagram, on your, your fucking, you go to your local supermarket and someone... He's telling his fans to block people. Fucking posted up a, 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 a insulting thing on the, the fucking community board about me. Block them. Because that's it. I don't care about that shit. I don't want to have to... I don't care about it. But the, he don't care about the drama that people make about him. But he's going to talk about it and make that the last thing he talks about in his video. Answer to these That's ridiculous accusations and have truths wow. and things that are spun. You don't care about it. Because all I fucking DSP. care about is picking up this goddamn controller and Xbox playing games. Controller. That's it. And that's all I want to keep doing. I want to keep putting out entertaining videos for you. Regardless of things that happen outside of that, who gives a flaming fuck? What happens outside of that, if this still happens and this still entertains you, this is what matters. And that's why, no, I'm not going to make a two-hour crazy drama response video to everything, to every fucking negative thing people say about me, because then that's buying into their fucking negative... It's extremely funny, because this video is almost two hours long, his video is an hour long, and these videos usually end up being double the length of the source video. Two hour long drama response video. That is hilarious. Teenage drama, little sissy fucking girl school girl Sissy school girl bullshit. bullshit. DSP, do you think you saying this is going to make someone leave you alone? No. 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 <laughs> and that they now Why would you say this? For years. You know, it's pretty sad that there's some people who made a negative montage about me three fucking years ago when they got their 15 minutes of fame. Evil AJ. They can't let it go. All they do on Twitter or whatever is follow me and talk shit about me. And that's their existence. Like, that's hey, Evil AJ, DSP for. talking about you again for no fucking away, reason. They would just cease to exist. I, wonder if, I wonder if DSP saying this is going to make Evil AJ leave DSP alone. It won't. Because they'd have no pertinence anymore. And they got a grasp to that one straw of... They got a grasp to that one straw. You mean like DSP doing Let's Plays, the straw he's been grasping on to the last five years, even though his views have been dying? All right, Some then. kind of fucking existence so that they're still pertinent or else what do they exist for, right? What do you and exist for, sad. DSP? He's acting like he's the fucking president of the, of the United States. He's acting like these shitty Let's Plays he uploads and these shitty vlogs he uploads are so fucking important and major and change the world. But everybody that make negative videos about him, they shouldn't exist. Those people are worthless. Worthless people. But these Let's Plays, they change lives. Him playing uh, Fallout 4 changes lives. It's a huge deal. It's, a, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. No one else in the world can do that. No one else. Really fucking sad. Wow, DSP. People actually identify as an anti-DSP person. Like, what <laughs> the fuck? 
If you ever in your DSP life, that's person. all you can identify as is someone who doesn't like someone and has got to go against everything. Even when, even when something positive comes I don't out, I go against like everything you say, DSP. But yet again, you bunch love. people up and fucking. Oh, we gotta groups. go give it a, a down vote anyway, even though it's good, because just because it's DSP, like. Even though it's good, subjective, people aren't gonna like everything. What? You should realize this after doing YouTube for seven years. But you don't because you fucking stupid. Wow. Like, you need to fucking reevaluate your life. <laughs> reevaluate really, your life. And get some help. Get some you help. You gotta find something to live for other than just to hate somebody. You gotta find something to live for other than to just hate somebody. What do you live for, DSP? Playing games on YouTube. Wow. I gotta reevaluate my life, bro. I really wanna have to worry about views on shitty YouTube videos every day like you, DSP. Someone else. I'm sorry By it took way, me so long to realize it. You are. I don't know you from fucking a hole in the wall. I'm I don't know you from a hole in the wall, except I'm going to make a really, really specific um, example, like what he just did with Evil AJ. But I don't know you from a hole in the wall, except when I make a really specific example. And except when he tweeted um, about Evil AJ and said AJ. But he don't know him from a hole in the wall. I don't give a shit who you are and I don't want to fucking deal with your nonsense and your fucking own mental little fucking sissy issues. I just sissy want to again. Put out gameplay every day and I have to deal with Dude, the backlash you're every day. Years old Phil, you this guy said about this. Sissies? Phil, did you see this video about this? Is this Phil, the Phil, 90s? This video about this? Phil, you see this forum post about this? No. Because I wake up and I play games. Because that's what I want to do. I want to share my Liar. own experiences. You delete with forum posts all the time. You see those forum posts. And I think that's what's happened over the years is now it's become every this day almost it's more drama, drama, drama. So you can't focus on the core. What I want to do, right? What I want to do is make this business successful. And you can't focus on it when you got all the fucking periphery shit around you. So just like this video, there's no likes. DSP is basically saying focus on me and nothing else. Likes. In there's a no nutshell. comments on this video. When you watch my stuff, watch it at face value. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. But please, don't let that periphery bullshit get to you anymore. All right? And please, that's the most you could do to help me. Is just fucking say, wow. Phil's entertaining or he's not. And if he's entertaining, I'll keep watching him. Period. All right. So now I've gone on for a long time. This is probably one of the longest videos I've ever made or talked. Lie. And I think his slide it video was longer. A pay cut is not something that people should take lightly. And a pay cut is certainly not something that I want to talk about publicly. But the fact that this is happening, it directly affects me. I need to let people know it's happening. I need to let you know what you could do to help support me in this time of need. And also of my new strategy in 2016, which hopefully, fingers crossed, the vlogging and the other edited content channel will pick up and start to make new ground. You know what I mean? Get new followers, new viewers, and the new viewership will make up for the loss in income that I'm going to get from this new contract negotiation, whoever I end up with. And hopefully... In this time, at the end of next year, I'll be saying Merry Christmas, everyone. The drama's over. No one really cares about their stupid bullshit. Merry anymore. Christmas. The drama's over. And to focus in on all this stuff and thank you for a great year. Okay. That won't happen. Thank though. you for a great year in 2015. Even with all the negative shit, it certainly was a growth year for me. I'll be talking more about this in my year end. It's funny because I was thinking a couple of days ago. The year is almost over. With DSP is going to have to do. He's going to do like a hate lock. Damn it. I stopped recording by accident, but I'm back now. I hit F12, I think. But um, I was thinking a few, I think maybe a day ago, a, a couple days ago. Wow, December almost over with. DSP is going to have to put out like a, a hate live or something. And it's going to be his end of the year address. And he's going to say uh, next year is going to be different. I'm going to do all of this stuff different. I'm going to no, avoid that negativity. And my fans, thanks for su supporting me. And he's going to do all of that. And this is it. This is the video. This is that video when he's going to say, I'm going to do all this stuff next year and next year, next year, next year, changes, changes, changes. You never let me down, DSP. When I focus on it, but, you know, it is what it is. Thank you for taking the time to watch this incredibly long video. Please spread the word. Let everyone know what's going on. Let them Thank know you for watching my shitty me. video. If and you watched it this as fall. always. Thank hashtag we need a hashtag for the end of it and if you know this hashtag or if you just cheat and look in the comments fuck i gotta edit this now god damn it i just thought about that because it's two separate videos i gotta fucking edit this shit now son of a fucking bitch i'm pissed off now because that means i gotta stay up later tonight and i can't stream now because i gotta wait for this to finish rendering motherfucker
I gotta figure out. I can't. I can't do anything. I can't do anything fun. I can't play a game while a video rendering, unless it's like a shitty game. Damn it. Anyway, uh, thank you if you watched it this fall. We need a hashtag. Hashtag big news. If you watched the video this fall, make sure to put in the comment hashtag big news. Thank you for watching. You're thank the you for reason watching. why I'm still here. You're the yeah, reason, reason why, why I'm, I'm still able here. To be successful and do what I love. Why I'm able to be successful. Do what I'm doing. What I love. Forward, hopefully. Doing what I complain about every day. Can keep doing this. All right. That is it, everyone. Wow. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Tomorrow we resume back. With and my two-hour-long sissy. Uh, Thanks for understanding. Have playlist. a good one. Happy holidays to everyone. Fuck. All right, DSP. Shut the fuck up. My two-hour-long um, reaction um, sissy video is done. Appreciate you for showing up. Um, that's pretty much all I can say. If you stuck around this long, you probably already liked the video. I guess I can like like the fucking video. If you like the video, like the video. I should start saying that just to fucking make fun of them. Instead of saying if you support the cause, like the video. But uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoy this. Whatever it is to fucking enjoy. And I can't wait to see how many videos this has by the end of the day today. I guarantee you it's going to have at least 10k. Guarantee it. He didn't make it a highlight on his channel either, by the way. Which is weird. And um, I'm sure, what time is it? It's almost 3 a.m. my time. I gotta set this video to render and find something fun to do until it's done rendering. So this is gonna be a fun day for me. Um, probably not gonna go to sleep. But I'll um, see you people in the next video. And uh, yeah, that's it.